greatest chess minds in the world have arrived in Germany, where the historic city of Munich will host the second leg of the FIDA Women's Grand Prix. Former world champions, rising stars and the finest players of their continents will fight for a total prize pool of €80,000. Local fans will be cheering for two home heroes on show, Elisabeth Petz and Inara Wagner, both looking to win the title for the host nation. Join our live show every day between the 2nd and 13th of February from 3pm Central European time. Your hosts for today are Grandmaster Stefan Kinderman and Women International Master Veronica Exler. Hallo aus München. Welcome to the third round of the FIDE Women Grand Prix. And here is Grandmaster Stefan Kindermann. And International Master Veronica Exler. <laughs> Thank you. So Stefan, today you had the big pleasure to make the first move in the game between Maria and Humpy. How did it feel? Well, in fact, it was the first time in my life I did the first move. So it was pretty exciting. And of course, at first I asked Maria which move I should do. I guessed for first B4, which <laughs> <laughs> made her laugh a bit. <laughs> and then I played E4 and thought about that maybe it's a bit unfair towards um, Humpy Conero because, of course, now this pawn is loaded up with magical energy after um, I moved it. But then, in fact, what happened then? Yeah, she took the move back. Oh but no. as we <laughs> will see later, she made e4 in the first move again so <laughs> good guess yeah but it's a typical procedure because the first move was done a bit before the official opening of the game and so she just didn't want to give um, information about her opening too early or only when it's absolutely necessary so this is quite a professional approach mm -hmm. so before we look at the games let's have a quick check on the results from yesterday we had many exciting games again, also some blunders. So what happened yesterday? So first of all, Anna won against Dinara. Then there was a draw between Nana and Maria, a draw between Hampi and Sansaya, a draw between China and Harika, a draw between Alina and Shongi, and Alexandra won against Elizabeth. So. What to say about yesterday? Yeah, yeah, yesterday was the day of surprising blunders, uh, although very exciting battles, of course, very good fighting spirit. But especially for Elizabeth, of course, it was a tragedy who, in about equal position, blundered a full piece. And also, an even more terrible, in my view, for um, Dinara, because Dinara played a very strong positional game. I was really uh, very much impressed by it, uh, nearly perfect, against very strong opponent, against Anna Musichuk. But then instead of playing the winning move and transposing to a um, clearly winning rook ending, she blundered the most important pawn in the position and in the end um, lost um, a very unpleasant queen's ending with a pawn down. Mm, yeah, sometimes this happens. A bit unfortunate, uh, but maybe today is her lucky day. Hmm. And now we have a quick look at the ranking after two rounds. So in the lead is... Alexandra Kostenyuk with two out of two points. So did you expect that? Well, for sure it's no surprise because, I mean, she's former world champion. And also concerning the ranking, she's one of the top players. So, well, but of course, after two rounds, um, still anything is possible. Mm -hmm. And she is actually my favorite player here. I mean, like, I think that she will win this tournament. But we will see there are still many rounds left. Yeah, okay, so let's take a look at the games. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so what to expect today? Let's have a quick look at the pairings for round three. And here we see Shongi White against Elizabeth Pates, Alexandra White against Dinara, Harika White against Alina, Zansaya White against China, Maria White against Hampi, and Anna White against Nana. Yeah, this is quite interesting, especially to see because the, um, the mental strengths of the both German players as the last um, round yesterday was for sure pretty depressing for them. And now we will see how well they can recover when both have black against dangerous opponents. Well, although every, every player in this tournament is dangerous. Um <laughs> 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 so this is quite exciting to see how they will do. Yeah, but today at the breakfast, I saw both of them and... 
they actually looked very happy. They <laughs> had nice talks with the other players. Most of the players here are very good friends. So yeah, and of course they are professional chess players, so they need to cope with some blunders. And I'm pretty sure that they will give everything for a great game today. And also probably the great breakfast in the hotel a few years ago, and Kempinski did a part <laughs> to cheer them up again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But maybe let's just start with this game. This is a solid line of the just... Um, yeah, it's Hampi against Maria. Mm -hmm. It's a very solid line of the Scotch opening, um, which is considered to be a bit drawish, very solid. Um, Quite often white players um, use this, but this is a small wrinkle that because taking the pawn in c6 now would be dangerous with rook e8 check and bishop g4 coming. Um, usually white players don't accept the pawn as was played in the game by Maria. And now this is a classical old line of the Scotch game. As I said, it's considered to be very solid. White usually doesn't lose it, but uh, also usually doesn't win it. So it's... <laughs> 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 but I seem to remember that in the uh, that bishop e6, I seem to remember that mostly c6 is played instead. Yes. Um, but I'm not an expert in this line. Quite I'm often. somehow an expert. <laughs> okay, okay, <laughs> so you can tell about it. I had this position many <laughs> times with black, yeah. Ah, okay. And I'm not sure, but I think every game ended in a draw, so it's not so exciting here. But anyway, anything can happen. And yes, I used to play c6 instead of bishop e6. Well, in some cases, when white takes on f6, then usually the queen takes back and black will get a double pawn on f6. But on the other hand, he will, um, she will have, sorry, the two bishops. And it's quite balanced. I mean, but um, as I know, Maria, I absolutely don't expect her that she's playing for a draw with the white pieces. So I'm sure she does have some interesting new ideas up her sleeve because she's both fighting and usually she's already well prepared. So this is quite interesting to see. Mm -hmm. Okay, but let's make a quick um, flight over the games. What do we have here? Ah, French defense. Yeah, it's Harika uh, against Kashlinskaya. Yeah, French defense. This move uh, knight c3 is um, definitely considered to be the best try for a wide advantage for the um, against the French defense. My um, favorite line for a long time was the Vinava, but I also had switched in the last years to the classical French. And now definitely the move for white really uh, to play for an advantage would be pawn to e5. Um, this is the classical main line. And it's considered nowadays to be pretty dangerous for black. Um, in the last very last time I didn't risk it with black. The move bishop g5 is the alternative, but it gives black the option to play a slightly better version for him, uh, for her. Um, of the Rubinstein French, which is considered uh, to be very solid. And um, yeah, this is this is quite typical play. And c5, this is the, the important move to play here in the um, in the Rubinstein French for black. And there are quite long theoretical lines, but I think for the moment black is holding his or her own. I don't remember exactly how to proceed. Bishop b5 check, bishop d7. For example, white might have the option to give black a um, double pawn, but it's not a big deal. I mean, white, of course, might play like this. And if white wants, he might take here. But the point being that such um, such end games are quite okay for black. Even though there's the doubled pawn, but black is pretty active. The king goes to e7, and um, this is really okay for black. So playing black, you enjoy this line? No, no, no. I, I never took in d4. Uh, in e4. <laughs> this is too passive for my taste. I always played um, I always played after bishop g5. I always played a beautiful, highly fascinating McCutcheon. I had lots of game with this. And here I really had pretty good results. I think I never lost it and um, won many games. But it's hyper sharp, and um, uh, if you run into a preparation, this can be the end. I mean, the line starts here with e5, h6. And now the interesting thing is the, um, the, the old main move was bishop d2, which is quite obvious. Then for some time, um, 
the bishop moved to e3, it was very fashionable and dangerous. But now in the, in the um, very latest theoretical developments, guess what is considered now to the best and most dangerous move in this position? <laughs> Taking on it's f6. No, no, this is not dangerous. This had an it's definitely not an intuitive move, which is probably the most dangerous for black. Okay, it's hard to guess if you don't know the line. Yeah. The most dangerous move is for me. Where to see one? Very strange, no? I mean, <laughs> absolutely yeah. contradicts classical strategies. But in fact, this is um, the move. This um, uh, definitely makes most headaches for black. Uh, it's very complicated lines, starting with starting with knight e4 and uh, queen g4, and then black has the choice between g6 or king f8, and white goes knight e2. But mm. now you need to explain why c1 and not e3, for example. This is very complicated to explain. In fact, I had, uh, it took some time for myself. It, it's best to be explained um, if I get it right after in the line. If in uh, well, if, the, or if white goes to d2 with the bishop, um, then it's relatively easy to show because after bishop d2, bishop c3, b3, knight to e4, the knight hits the bishop on d2 in some lines is favorable and black usually attacks with c5 and um, queen queen to a5. So if you want to white this, it would be logically to play the bishop to e3. I mean bishop h4, g5, this is considered to be quite okay for black. If you go bishop e3, the line starts with um, knight e4, queen g4. And now I think, well, either, either g6 or I think here it's g6, I think. And now let's say um, um, knight to e2, c5, a3, bishop c3, b c3. And now there are some very important lines I uh, seem to remember. I'm, I'm not sure it's at the exact position, but um, that after h5, queen f4, g5 in some lines the white queen is forced to go to an um, unpleasant place and queen um, f3 she's not so well placed after knight c6 because the pawn is hanging and if this bishop would be on um, would be on c1 then the whole black concept doesn't work because the white queen is a good square on e3 so this is the concrete reason but <laughs> of course it's absolutely impossible to foresee it if you don't know the lines mm -hmm. <laughs> so thank you for this great introduction <laughs> to friends yeah, but it's a pity because the the McCutcheon line is really extremely fascinating and complicated, while the um, relatively the Rubinstein line is solid but um, not very exciting. I think the main line goes here something with Bishop B5 check and then Queen E2 and White plays Long Castle, something like this. Then. Ah, what's this? Oh, yeah, this is the. Um, in this moment, instead of the, the old main move d4, this the bishop b5 check, the Moscow variation became very fashionable. It's um, not so compromising for white and still gives chances for some at least some small long-term advantage. So this is very popular. And knight d7 is the most fighting move. Basically, black hopes that later white um, White will have to change his bishop on d7 in many lines. He must not, but he can. And in this case, black would have the bishop pair, and this, of course, is a very strong long-term asset. But this is a very modern move, bishop a4. Yeah, this, all, this is an interesting, very modern gambit line. White simply plays the um, short castle and does not protect his pawn in e4. But it has turned out that taking on e4 is very dangerous for black. I think white goes d4 and goes rook e1, and white gets a very um, strong lead in development. So no black player for a long time did dare to take this pawn. So black plays first a6, which is a typical move in the Sicilian defense. Instead, they're threatening to win the bishop after bishop b3, um, c4. So white plays a move that uh, is typically taking up a kind of Marochi formation, and now still it's t uh, considered to be too dangerous to take in e4. I think it's also because of d4 in this position and white gets a very strong initiative. So black plays a normal move, but now white has protected his pawn on e4 and basically white um, 
what got what she wants. She gets some kind of uh, yeah some uh, kind of Marochi bind with the pawns in c4 and e4. Just the white bishop is in a bit uh, unusual place, and this will be the question whether it's well placed here or not. I mean, it later on it can go to c2, but drawback might be that this pawn in c4 in some lines when black the black rook later comes to the comes to the c line, this might be a problem because then the bishop is a bit clumsy. If otherwise, if it would be on e2, of course, it would not be a problem. But this is an interesting variation. Mm -hmm. Here I'm expecting some sharper play. Yeah, great line. I have never seen that one before, but again, I'm not a Sicilian player. Well, this, this line I only uh, was interested from the white side, but... Ah, the king's Indian. That's very cool. Elizabeth is uh, showing against a very strong, her very strong um, Chinese opponent, Tan Shongxi, showing very good uh, fighting spirit because, of course, nowadays the King's Indian defense is considered to be really risky for black. Um, if it goes wrong, you can easily land up in a um, positionally extremely difficult position. But of course, it's one of the openings that offers the most counter chances for black. And I played for many, many years. I played King's Indian defense. And um, it's kind of an addiction if you're in those days when you started playing the King's Indian. Because if you win, then you win in really beautiful style. Some fantastic uh, sacrifice or games. And so it's you, you feel absolutely high. What's the problem is this usually is accompanied with, with some very bad positional defeats. <laughs> 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 and sometimes you def tend to forget about statistics after one beautiful sacrificial win after 10 terribly lost games. <laughs> 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 so this is um, a point um, when from a professional side of view it's better to be a bit sober. Um, and I stopped playing the King's Indian because also you have to be really updated in the theoretical developments um, because if you run into a preparation this can be absolutely deadly here. Mm. But you prefer it compared to Grünfeld? Well, I think relatively had better results with the King's Indian. <laughs> 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 but this only because it had extremely bad results with the um <laughs> Grünfeld. <laughs> with the Grünfeld. <laughs> That's oh no. I'm sorry. <laughs> I never tried the King's Indian. I don't know. For me, it's not the right opening. So I go for Grünfeld. Well, this H3 looks strange, but it's um, quite a fashionable line because... Um, just to highlight the basic ideas in, in such such structures, mainly black, the typical black push to activate his or her game is f5, and so white comes in time to play g4. And if black plays f5, then white can take and open the g line and sometimes double take here and get the e4 square for his or her knight. So this is quite fashionable and has given black a lot of headache in the last in the last years. But Elizabeth is well prepared. She deviates with this move knight c6, which is quite interesting. This in this position, uh, I didn't see it so far. But I'm um, for many years no more king's Indian expert. It provokes d5, but it's not really the move white wants to play. I guess Elizabeth would have just retreated to b8, and then hit the white center later on with um, with c6. It seems Shangji is not uh, surprised because she played relatively quickly bishop e2. And now I guess that if the critical move now must be to play e5. And then it's the question after d5. Whether black intends to go with the knight to e7, which is similar to the very long main lines of the King's Indian. After if white had played instead of h3 short castle, the so-called Madre Plata variation. Um, in some lines, it's possible to sacrifice the uh, pawn here with knight d4. But here I'm a bit skeptical that it works. So I guess if black plays e5 after d5, the knight would have to retreat. I wonder what's the alternative to e5. Mm, it's hard to say if there's any other sensible move here. I would go for e5. Yeah, e5 must be the idea, but it's interesting to compare because usually um, after after e5, d5, knight e7, this has to be compared with the with the classical main line with 
ponds of and the labyrinths of Siri. If white goes here, um, <laughs> bishop e2, e5, short castle, knight c6, d5. There are lots of books only at starting in this position. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> it's <laughs> hyper sharp and um, like usually attacks like a maniac here at the king's side while white is trying to break through on the queen side. There are fights for life and death. But all together, um, I think nowadays one thinks that the white uh, has the better chances. But of course, in a practical game, anything can happen. Mm. So this has to be to compared now um, to this position, when instead of short castle, white has played h3. Of course, white can always change in e5, but this is not, uh, not very ambitious, basically. So I think the normal procedure would be this one, and arguing that in this position maybe the move h3 is not as useful as short castle. But it's hard to say if you're not an expert in this, because I'm sure the Tan Chong Xi is extremely well prepared. Why can't we play g4 again? Of course we can, yeah. And probably this is the idea, because otherwise <laughs> the move doesn't <laughs> make too much sense. And I guess that black now, but now the knight on e7 is uh, quite well placed in my view to um, to combat the setup. I think now black has to go knight e8 and f5. And this is the typical typical battle here. I mean, um, well, usually white will prepare the long castle, of course, or maybe play rook g1 as a prophylactic move. There, there are many mm. ideas here. I actually like this line with h3. Maybe I'll change to this line. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it's I think um, from the theoretical standing in the moment, it has a very good reputation. But mm -hmm. of course, nowadays, it's also mm, pretty well, pretty far um, analyzed. And of course, you know, have to know quite a bit to play it because every black player is prepared for it. That's the drawback when the lines become fashionable. OK. Ah, this was from yesterday. So. Let's just look whether some interesting things happened. Oh, here everything is still mm -hmm. basically the same. This is this Marucci formation against the, the hedgehog structure. Ah, this is an interesting move here. She played. Um, Harika did not play bishop b5 check, but bishop e2. This move I think I did not see so far. This is. Um, looks modest, but I guess white is playing for small end game advantage of the queen takes d4. That's what I expect now to play queen d4. Yeah, I, I played a line with bishop d3, mm -hmm. and there you have like similar position. I mean, it's a bit different, but I there you also take with the queen on d4 if black takes, and then the end game, at least I really like the end <laughs> game afterwards. Yeah, because white has active pieces and yeah, can push the three pawns on the queen side. Yeah, and uh, just to show um, one of the ideas of the seemingly innocuous, um, innocent move, uh, bishop e2, because of the queen d4, if the queens are changed, then later on the bishop might get a very good post on f3 and putting pressure on the black queen side. This can be somewhat unpleasant for black. But of course, yeah, she did it. She took with the queen. It's mm. a question. Maybe for this reason, black should not change in d4 because this gives white a very good formation for um, her pieces. Yeah, it's really very similar to the bishop d3 line. Okay, but here still anything can happen. I mean, there are lots, uh, lots of, course, of options. Of course, yeah. Let me just look at the... There's some interesting developments here. Ah, yeah, black plays h6. This means white, mm -hmm. is, white is provoked now to take in f6. And after bishop f6, surely black will take with the queen. And then most probably this type of ending will ensue. Yeah, very typical. And then we will see what Maria has prepared here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm very curious because it's, as far as I know, it's con considered to be pretty harmless for black. Yeah. That's also I'm what I know, yeah. But I'm sure that Maria prepared something. So far, she also nearly didn't use up any time. So it's okay. 
uh, the right. game between Tanzania and China. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go back a bit. I guess we didn't see it all so far, no? Yeah, we it's new it. for us. Yeah. Oh my <laughs> God, I'm sorry. And now here we transposed to um, a Svezhnikov mainline. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when Svezhnikov invented his line, I remember the end of the 70s, it was quite a sensation. Everybody said this is totally anti-positional because terrible, um, terrible ho central holes with the mm, square d5 and also black in many lines gets here the first set ugly double pawn. But then um, and on only Svezhnikov defended his opening, even if lots of classical players um, disdained it and said, well, now this is absolutely nothing. And nowadays, this is still considered to be one of the very best high-quality opening, uh, openings for black against e4. So this is, this is quite impressive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, here is the moment when white does have the choice um, either to take in f6, which is a bit sharper, when black retakes with the pawn and will later um, open up with f5. While um, after this is a bit um, more positional play. Now white does have this beautiful knight on d5, but on the other hand, this knight on a3 will take quite some time to come back into the game. And black has the two bishops and has had several dynamic ideas and some lines later on to attack with the f-pawn or with the pawn to b4. So this is considered to be quite okay for black. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so many games with Sveshnikov and actually I also played it like I think two times when I was a child. But yeah, it's interesting but not really my <laughs> opening. <laughs> okay, but <laughs> now we will make a very short break because we have a special guest here. <laughs> so see you soon. So I'm very happy um, welcoming here a special guest in our small studio. This is my very good friend, Roman Krulich. And Roman Krulich, as you probably saw already, is the tournament sponsor who made this um, great tournament possible in Munich. And maybe, Roman, how did it happen that um, it was possible to get this tournament to Munich? Yes, I'm a sponsor of chess for, for many years. and. Uh Last year, I had a visit from uh, Emil Sutowski in my office, and he asked me whether I would like to sponsor some FIDE tournament, and uh, we had some stuff to, to, to speak about. It was Greenfeld opening, <laughs> 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 and so he convinced me very, very quickly to, to support this tournament. So this, this highlights the theory <laughs> of Veronica that Grünfeld is a very strong opening. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I heard it yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it must be said that Roman is really for many years uh, one of the very, um, the most important, maybe the most important um, chess sponsor in, uh, in Germany and also founder of our Munich Chess Foundation um, that does projects for um, mainly children in socially deprived areas. So he does have a very big heart both for chess and for people who need some, some help, some support. And um, by the way, he's also a strong chess player himself. No, <laughs> don't, don't exaggerate. No, I was thinking about yeah. rating 2,200 or... Yeah, I, my, my best was 2,250 now, oh, sorry. about uh, <laughs> 2,150. <laughs> so yeah, I would be very glad to, to, to keep it. <laughs> <laughs> and I only play uh, s senior tournaments now. <laughs> But quite successfully, I think recently you won a tournament in Bad Eibling. Oh, it's uh, some, <laughs> years, uh, some years ago. 
So how do you like the tournament so far? I think it's a it's a great uh, fighting spirit. Yeah, it was a pity that both German uh, players uh, lost yesterday, but I think it's uh, they are very good fights. And uh, yesterday I saw it in my living room and mm -hmm. I heard your commentaries, <laughs> <laughs> and I enjoyed it a lot. Yeah. <laughs> No, I enjoy I enjoy the 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 fighting the mm -hmm. fighting spirit of the players. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think this is even more fighting spirit, also more risky openings than in many top men's tournaments. So I think for the spectators, it's really absolutely um, a chess festival. Yes. Today I saw it some Sveshnikov. I I played it in my youth. So. Yeah, exactly. And on the moment we <laughs> see the Sveshnikov game here, I think this is still quite a theoretical line and. Um, and as far as I know, black is pretty okay in these lines. Um, black does have the pair of bishops. Which side would you prefer, Roman, white or black? Uh, only black, because I, I okay. played it only <laughs> with black. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I must say also, I also, this type of positions I played with black for some years in my, in my younger, junior, professional time. And usually also like the, the yeah. black position. And yeah, some years ago, I, I tried to... to, to go back to Sveshnikov and I played it twice in a tournament I lost twice so I... <laughs> I yeah, well nowadays... <laughs> it's, it's nowadays there are a lot of theory, yeah? Yeah, against the razor sharp theory, I mean, um, in if you play against an uh, opponent, if, if you go unprepared into the, in the tournament battle and your opponent um, is, is well prepared, is up to date with modern theory, this is like in a fight, if you fight with a wooden, wooden stick against somebody with a samurai sword, I mean, still the better fighter might win, but <laughs> the odds aren't uh, absolutely in your favor if you're not uh, if you're not prepared for the latest wrinkles of theory. But here, uh, this is, in my view, this is quite old-fashioned approach by White. I don't think this is considered uh, to be any uh, of any danger for Black, as far as I know. Black can later push to a5, and even though White can put the knight to d5, but probably Black will retreat. The queen. Um, to b7, and then later on white has to look out for f5, f5 or, yeah. or sometimes after the preparatory g6 and f5, and also black can attack on the as dynamic ideas to attack on the queen side with a5 and b4. While white can try, of course, to change the bishop on e6, mm -hmm. but definitely black will not comply because uh, not change, but let white change because in this case white uh, black would retake with the pawn and getting firm control over the, the crucial square. Mm -hmm. Well, I must say, if I would be black, I would be pretty happy. Yeah. And also it's interesting that uh, black, um, the lady with for not Chinese, not easy uh, pronounceable name, Shu, Shu Jina, I think, if I've got it right by now, <laughs> 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 on the right side, Jan Zaya, um, Abdul Malik. And it seems that black here um, is still it's in well the preparation. Yeah. Every tournament player knows that this is an interesting moment. Um, who is the first to fall into a long sink, to go into the sink tank, as they say? Because usually that's D1, if it's not a bluff. Um, it's D1 uh, who is worse um, prepared. So this is yeah. quite an interesting moment. I think the, the, the game of, of Dinara Wagner yesterday, mm -hmm. there was a, a time problem at the end, or no? She yeah, this, this was really sad, we yeah. said in the beginning. Because she had a good position. No, not only a good position, I think for in my view she played really an extremely good positional game against yeah. this very strong opponent. She played perfectly for her, nearly perfectly for a very long time. And only in time pressure, instead of transposing to a clearly winning rook ending, uh, she blundered the most important pawn in the position. So this was really... Um, from her perspective, it was quite a tragedy. Yeah, I was quite happy because uh, as we organized this tournament in Munich, we had the po possibility to to put an, another mm -hmm. German German player for the for the tournament, mm -hmm. and there was a competition uh, of the Deutsche Schachbund, and mm -hmm. Dinara Dinara won. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think absolutely deservedly. And in the first leg of the of this Women Grand Prix in in Astana in Kazakhstan, she also had a bad start, but then she recovered very well made a place in the middle of the field and I think was even ahead of Elizabeth Petz. So this was quite impressive. So definitely she does yeah, have I hope she strength. She <laughs> she's still uh, looking forward to, to her games, yeah. So you're crossing because after 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 <laughs> two losses you yeah. 
you have some problems to, to come into the tournament, yeah? Yeah, exactly. This is the moment when yeah. you have to show uh, so your So maybe today strengths. a draw would be, would be great for her to, to recover, no? Yeah, this used to be the old Soviet uh, school of <laughs> thought. They used to say, <laughs> after losing two games, uh, no matter who is the opponent, you should try to make a quick draw, yeah. just to regain a bit of confidence. Okay, should we make a quick overview over the other games? Yeah, of course. So, let's see. Um, ah, this mouse, sorry, uh, isn't perfect here. There was a knight of opening I saw with um, with uh, bishop b5, and I won that. I, I played mm -hmm. it with with black two uh, knight of, and I didn't understand why why she she moves. Uh, Bishop to a5 <laughs> without any, bishop to without a4, any yeah. need. Mm -hmm. yeah, this <laughs> so maybe you can explain yeah that yeah to this me. Is, this is a very fashionable <laughs> line. The idea is that white wants to get um, this uh, this Marucci set up, but ah. without giving the bishop to this on d7. And the point being, as we briefly discussed before, is that it turned out, which is a very recent development, that white can just sacrifice this pawn because in former times, um, one would think that white has to play a move like knight c3. But then this bishop after after a6 is in danger. Is in danger and probably would have um, you would have to change it on d7, what White does not want. But then it turned out that White can simply um, leave this pawn on e4 en prise, mm -hmm. and that to take this pawn is extremely dangerous for Black because White will attack with d4 and rook to e1. Mm -hmm. And uh, now ah, it is no, know that, no yeah. Black players would dare to do this, and even after the move a6 which now threatens to trap the white bishop with b5 and c4. White has the time to play her, in this case, by dream move c4, because that's what white wants, to get this mm -hmm. Marucci bind, um, because still after knight e4, d4, d4 is considered to be very dangerous for black. Mm -hmm. So you so don't take as black? Normally not. Mm -hmm. And after black plays um, e6, and now white has got what she wants, a Marucci bind. Mm -hmm. And still, this is quite an interesting position here. Um, because compared with usual um, Marochi or with black from black side hedgehog type of position, this bishop is an unusual place. Mm -hmm. The bishop usually is on e2, when on the one hand it protects c4, so this might be later some um, a weak point if black is developing and putting pressure on the c line against c4. On the other hand, if it um, moves to c2, in some cases it might be quite nice for a king side attack. So mm -hmm. So this is a very fresh and, and interesting opening mm -hmm. line. Ah, I don't think this is not a real game position. Okay, that's King Indian, no? Yeah, yeah. Ah, this is very interesting because um, H3 is, is, a, is a, as we discussed, is a very fashionable line against the King's Indian. In several lines, White wants to. Um, Advance with g4, not as an aggressive move, but as but as prophylaxis against the typical black plan with um, with f5. And we discussed this that I basically here the only good move for black is e5. And now Elizabeth is playing a very sharp idea um, e7. because the normal move would be knight e7. But in fact, we briefly talked about this move knight d4. But I said I don't think it's really absolutely correct. But it seems I was wrong because Elizabeth played this pawn mm -hmm. sacrifice. I mean, it is known the pawn sacrifice in similar positions. And here, um, after queen d4, rook e8, Eight. and now black threatens obviously Take to take e4. e4. So the white queen is retreating, and black plays queen e7. This is a very interesting concept because if black can regain the pawn on e4, then I guess with this. Well, I'm a little bit naturalistic, so <laughs> 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 one pawn is one pawn, or no? Yeah, yeah, but the question yeah. is how white is uh, what yeah. white is doing. I mean, if white is plays short castle or so, then black can take. So I think um, uh, Tan has to decide what to do about the pawn. Of many options, bishop g5, for example. Um, f3 looks mm -hmm. definitely a bit ugly. Yeah. I mean, f3 would be the very materialistic move, but I think it's very dangerous because the, um, the white squares... Yeah. And, and bishop f3? f3? Of course, yeah, bishop f3 is an option. Although if black wants, then black can take in e4, but... Um, ah, With sorry. f5, yeah. 
the ship f3 is an option. Probably there are also other ideas. Black might play knight d7 to e5 or so, but, mm -hmm. but I guess that black can take in e4. And after bishop e4, um, uh, now five. even even a bishop takes c3 probably, I think, is no problem for black. Mm -hmm. And then queen takes e4. Yeah. And in case yeah. um, knight takes e4, then probably even better than f5. Also, f5 is strong. f5 or... And this looks quite ah, dangerous for white. So I guess that the principled move here for white um, would be to play bishop to g5, really, if you want to keep the pawn. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure this is still some modern theory, which I don't, that I don't know, of course, yeah. <laughs> not being professional. And you have no engine here? Uh, well, we see this engine. The only thing is this is quite uh, was quite frustrating sometimes in the games because we have this engine bar here. Ah, it shows okay, the evaluation. White is a little bit better. Yeah, but oh, this says nothing, of course. And this yeah. It just shows that bishop g5 is not a big blunder. <laughs> yeah. And we are frustrated in some uh, very complicated position. It showed absolutely winning position for one side, but we could not find it out why. <laughs> <laughs> Quite and probably so for the spectators. I wanted to congratulate to you and especially uh, Veronica for, for your good job. And I think it's very exhausting, you know, if you... Uh, have to do comments five five hours or something like that. Well, you, no, you need more breaks, and we make more commercial breaks. Yeah, so exactly. This is, this, is a very good idea. this is a very good plan. <laughs> yeah. Of course, of course, we will do this. But for me, it's no problem because Veronica <laughs> does have so much fresh energy. So in case I'm running out of steam, <laughs> she's a little bit younger than you. A I little think. bit. Yeah. <laughs> Just half half Stefan, as we found out. <laughs> or third Stefan, maybe. <laughs> She looks like third Stefan, but in fact she's <laughs> half Stefan. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think bishop g5, in my view, is the most principled move because and then it will be the question after, let's say, h6, whether white will give the... Um, if white really wants to keep the pawn, then has to take in f6, which of course this mm -hmm. black bishop yeah, can be a bishop monster. Pair. And then maybe to play something like bishop f3 or... Yeah. Or argue that this is a good way to give back the pawn after castle, and um, because now if Black wants to get the pawn, uh, yeah. she has to take her, and maybe after move like Rook E1, for example, this might be a bit better for White. I don't know, <laughs> not sure, but it might be. So one of some of my ideas, but I'm sure there's some concrete theory here. Okay. No, it's still one game. How do the players uh, do the preparation? Because they they know the pairings uh, since I think some weeks or no? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, they and know they, they they come here already prepared for for her games. For sure, this is a big help because uh, at least from my last professional times, uh, and if I play sometimes some Bundesliga games nowadays without big success. Um, uh, on the, to prepare on the same day, this takes lots of energy. If you have not done it before, and if you don't have a second, then to work before the game for two or three hours, because nowadays nearly everybody of your opponents uh, does have a broad repertoire, plays two or three opening variations, and you have mm -hmm. to prepare for everything. So it's a big advantage if you have time before to work at home, alone, or even better with some seconds, and then just before the game to do some recap of the lines. Yeah. It's a lot of work, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. I admire that, yeah. Yeah, nowadays it's top professional, both for women and men. It's a full-time job. I mean, it's um, it's like in other sports. You have to train every day, five or six hours to be successful, play a lot of training games and tournaments. So this is a tough job. So they, they really earn any um, prize money that they might make. <laughs> So maybe we will make a short break. Oh, yes. Thanks, thanks. It thank was you a pleasure having you here, Roman. No, and thanks, 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 you. thanks very much. Thanks for to you and, for and, and, <laughs> and especially Veronica. <laughs> <laughs> and have fun. Yeah, thank you. Thank yeah, you. I hope we will all have lots of fun. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs>
Möchten Sie auf innovative Weise die Qualität Ihrer Entscheidungen verbessern? Die besten Strategien der Schachgroßmeister nutzen, auch wenn Sie selbst vielleicht kein Schachspieler, keine Schachspielerin sind? Sich vor schwerwiegenden Planungsfehlern schützen? Ihre Intuition bestmöglich in Ihren Planungs- und Entscheidungsprozess einfließen lassen? Oder suchen Sie einfach einen inspirierenden Keynote-Vortrag für Ihre nächste Veranstaltung? Dann haben Sie viel gemeinsam mit Unternehmen wie Lufthansa Cargo, wie BMW, wie E.ON oder der Bayerischen Staatskanzlei. Überall dort konnte ich schon in Form von Vorträgen oder Workshops die wichtigsten Konzepte und Ideen unseres Strategiemodells Königsplan vermitteln. Hat Sie das neugierig gemacht? Dann freue ich mich auf Ihre Anfrage. Viele Informationen sind auch auf unserer Homepage www.königsplan.com zu finden. I'm joined by top Indian female grandmaster Harika. How are you doing, Harika? Yeah, it was good. It, uh, it was very tense game, and uh, I think draws um, more than good for me today. You just finished your game with Chinese female player Zuzina. A very, very complex game, very tricky. Your opponent had two pass pawns in the sixth and seventh rank. You had some counterplay and an extra pawn. How are you feeling during the game? Did you think it could, could go either way, or are you confident on your options? Uh, I know that this is just equal, but uh, over the board it wasn't easy to understand which way to go. Uh, maybe uh, I forgot the prep and the plan somewhere. Uh, I think rookie six, rookie eight, rookie six. I thought practically possible because I couldn't find anything else. Uh, when white is getting knight b3, b4, knight c5, it's not clear for me what I'm doing. It, it's just like I'm sitting there and holding, trying to hold the position. I felt it could become very, very dangerous. And that, that's the reason I have chosen this rook e6, rook h6 plan to just get g, uh, g pawn and c3 pawn at some point and just try to uh, see how it can go. Mm -hmm. But I was sure that it's wrong. I felt like uh, white should be winning in many ways. But I, uh, I was just trying to play as practical as possible. From the outside, it looked very dangerous. These pass pawns very close to the, to the last line, and also your bishop on a7. So the whole game revolved around those pawns, if they were going to be strong or weak. Would you, would you play this variation again in the future, or was it just too tense to try again? Uh, that I would keep it as a secret, but uh, uh, at least I understood uh, that it's practically little unpleasant when you don't know the full idea but uh, i think overall it's very nice uh, interesting try uh, both of us didn't expect to land up in this position uh, yeah it's it'll be good experience for future so do you think that possibly your opponent didn't have the full line prepared or maybe as you say both of you probably didn't expect to land in this position then. It was something different maybe of your preparation. Uh, she, um, she, I think she thought on the board and decided uh, to try this practically. Uh, but uh, if black knew the plan, uh, how exactly to hold, I think it could have been easier. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, basically good experience to understand how to make a draw in this line. <laughs> At least I can say from the outside that although many draws are boring, this was definitely not a boring draw. There was a lot of entertainment, uh, a, lot of, a lot of things going on in the background. And uh, I hope you have these exciting games in the future rounds. Yeah, I hope so. After a long time, I'm coming back to classical chess and I just want to try each game as it comes. Okay. Good luck in the next rounds. Thank you. I'm joined by Maria Muzichuk. Today you just finished your game with Nana Dagnitze, the game ended in a draw. But it seemed to me you did have some, at least from the outside, some winning chances at some point in the game. What can you say about the game, how it went and the way maybe you could have improved? In the opening, my opponent play, played very bravely. <laughs> she sacrificed the pawn. Um, but I think I managed to uh, consolidate and my position was much better. Just at some moment when I was in time trouble, uh, I think I did something wrong um, because I feel that my position was waning. 
Yeah, so mm, it's a pity that I lost like uh, the pawn on a5, then another one on e5, and things was not that easy. That I did notice that your concentration levels during the game are very high. You practically never stand up, at least I didn't see you standing up much, so you're really concentrated in the game. But of course, these queen end games, even with the pawn up, are always very tricky, that's true. Yes, I try to play uh, like, uh, the best I can and I need to be concentrated, but okay, from time to time I stand up and try to walk a bit because it's really tough to play five hours without rest. Okay. I notice also that you played many, many games with uh, Nana, about 40 or 45 games combining Blitz, Classical and, and Rapid. Uh, you did have a plus score, if I remember correctly. Um, what can you say about all your games against Nana? Is she proved to be a, a difficult opponent for you? Mm, she's a very good player and solid one. So, I mean, of course, we made many draws as well. Perhaps my score is better, but it depends how to count. I mean, Rapid and Blitz games, like if we count them or we do not count, is also a question, yeah. But uh, to be honest, I do not know the score. I mean, so I was not like paying attention to it before the game. One last question. You saw that your, your sister also had, funnily enough, uh, a queen ending with an extra pawn. In this case, she was able to convert. I'm sure you're happy for her for this win. Yeah, sure. I'm very happy because when I finished my game, I saw her result. But to, to be honest, I saw only like maybe two times her position. So because I was playing my game, so I do not know what was going uh, on her board. It was a very up and down game. At some point, she was okay. Then I think she was slightly worse. Then better. There was even a draw offer I saw that Dinara offered her a draw, but she said she said no, and she was able to convert the extra pawn. I think I heard it during the game that uh, my sister got a draw offer. Yes. I think I heard, but I had to play my game and I was thinking on my move, so I could not, like, you know, to see her game. Congratulations and good luck in the next uh, games. Thank you. Welcome back. <laughs> Stefan was so excited from all the nice games that he missed the last one, the game Nana against Anna. So we will take a look at this game right now. Yeah, I'm very sorry. My apologies go to Anna and Nana um, that uh, neglected this game so far, <laughs> although it's pretty interesting. It was um, like in one of the other games, it was the Moscow variation um, that is very fashionable, as we said, to avoid the heavily analyzed main lines. And knight d7 is also, also played here. This is the absolutely most fashionable move here. Very fighting move, um, black delays the development a bit, but hopes to, um, if white, in case white exchanges in d7, to get a bishop pair, which might be a strong um, positional asset later on. And now white plays a very unusual move in this line, it must be said. We saw in the one, in the other game, we saw this uh, fashionable bishop move to a4, and usually white in this, um, oh no, no, s no, d4 still is normal, sorry. One move later comes um, something unusual. In several, there are several plans for white. White can also play something in principle c3, and after a6, oh, sorry, c3, and uh, after move a6 to drop back to d3, and then the idea to play later bishop c2 and d4. This is one line, but there are, well, there are lots of ideas. d4 is the most principled, but. Um, now it's very unusual to take with the knight here. The old series was, is all going with queen takes d4. And then a6, bishop takes d7. I played this several times on the white side. Now white can play with c4, I can play with knight c3. I seem to remember I had a very interesting game on um, on Gran Canaria because this is a place where also Roman, as usual, <laughs> was tournament sponsor and had a very interesting field with the... Um, former absolutely chess legend Enrique Mecking, um, who was candidate for the world championship, who was the absolutely best player of South America for in, in his days. It was the time of Bobby Fischer and a bit later. And there's a very interesting story because then he fell seriously ill, some inc normally incurable disease. And um, everybody said he would die. But then he became extremely religious, Christian religious, and um, 
and by miracle he was saved, and then from chess professional he turned to become a priest. But still played chess from time to time, and when he played in this, <coughs> um, when he played in this tournament, um, it was very interesting that because before the game, also before the game against me, he blessed his pieces. But he blessed only his pieces, not mine. So, <laughs> <laughs> and in fact, we had an interesting battle, and it was a draw in the end. But okay, but but just to highlight, this is this was mm, this is a known line, but to play knight takes d4. I think this is pretty unusual here, because this is now like, um, ah, it's again this pawn sacrifice like in the other game mm -hmm. we commented, because of the knight c3, then I would guess that this bishop, bishop on b5 is not so well placed, it would lose time, and here, again white offers the sacrifice, but as you remember it's very dangerous to take it, I think for example, in case black would play some, uh, let's say, primitive way, then I think this knight move to f5 is very dangerous for black. This threatens mate in one move. <laughs> 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 and black would have to return the pawn somehow and um, probably fall into a pretty bad position. So black plays a6, and now white returns to d3 with his bishop. And this is a very unusual setup. And at first sight, one should think that it's not very dangerous for white. Uh, if I would not know that for sure this is some prepared theory, because black can always take this white bishop on d3, and while well, with white I would think um, this is not cannot be anything special. But I'm sure that Anna has prepared something here. Ah, now she now she transposes to this Marochi setup, like in the other uh, game with this Moscow variation with bishop b5. Very interesting. Now is the big question for black, to take or not to take. She doesn't. Ah, you know, she does. Okay, uh, because otherwise, one move later, then the bishop might retreat, and then in the end, it might be that this knight on c5 is a bit stupid. Mm -hmm. uh, a4, okay, this is a prophylactic move, of course, against this black counter blow with b5. And now, in many ways, now black. Basically, have two ideas: uh, either to put up this kind of hedgehog position somehow, or to try to break um, quickly with d5. Well, I guess that here d5 for black is not probably not so good because white can take and play e5. Mm -hmm. And probably this is somewhat better for white. Very active pieces for white. So black goes more for the uh, solid. Solid set up. Okay, I must say. Do, do, do you understand the move H3 here? No. Ah, okay. I know how white, I think I understand white wants to put the bishop to E3. Mm. And uh, yeah. here knight G4 would be a bit unpleasant. Okay, now normal procedure would be now to play, let's say, um, bishop to E3. And then, ah. Sorry, <laughs> this mouse is queen c7 attacking the pawn on c4. And now is the question if white plays b3. If white can stabilize now, it's quite uh, okay, but um, um, uh -huh, now d5 is still not possible. Um, no, maybe it is. I mean, this would be a concrete question whether d5 is possible here. If it works, this would be bad news for white. Why can't we take? Well, we can. Ah, we take with the knight, yeah, sorry. Yes, we take with the knight. Ah, no, so yeah, first so e takes, and oh then you're right. knight takes. Yeah, probably, um, yeah, you're right. Probably white can simply take the pawn in this way. But now, only if, well, if black would regain this pawn, then black would have a very good position, but um, in the moment it doesn't look like. Well, in case white can stabilize without um, giving black a tactical tactical chance against this pawn, then I think white can be quite happy with the result of the opening. Although I don't too much like this move in h3, because normally white in this uh, this type of positions likes to um, put a stabilizing pawn to f3, and then there would be some holes in this pawn structure. But 
but maybe also white intends to go play more aggressively with f4 and e5 or, or mm. f5. So also an interesting position. Okay, so let's look. Let's look what happened in the other games. Oh yeah, here's our Sveshnikov game, game that we discussed also with Roman a bit. Oh, this move is also sur surprising for me, bishop c4. Because basically white does not want to change the, the bishops in this way. Because afterwards, in the end, the white knight might, might land here. Yeah, you mean black doesn't want to yeah, exchange? Black, yeah, yeah, exactly. But this definitely would be a positional mistake if black would take here. Because then... He could no more challenge the white knight on d5, and then, mm -hmm. then really white might have some positional advantage. Ah, but the idea but was they made a repetition so mm -hmm. far. Yeah, the idea was just to to show white that his move. Um, <laughs> it's funny. The idea is just to um, demonstrate to white that his her move, sorry, um, queen d3 doesn't achieve anything because here the queen has uh, has not to retreat and might go to e to c2. It's interesting. Why does it go to um, to d1? I think this looks more natural. Or is a5 now a problem? Yeah, probably mm, a5, a5 is the idea. Because what white does not is a well, yeah, and if the yeah, and if white takes here, then after b takes c4, then the um, The pawn on b2 will be a problem. After knight d5, queen takes b2. Mm -hmm. And on the other hand, if white would now play bishop d5, it's a totally different story because white cannot retake with a piece but has to retake with a pawn. And this is very nice for black. I think black is better here. Mm -hmm. So this is funny idea. It just uh, says to white, um, Return the game. Bishop c4, your last move doesn't achieve anything because you have nothing better than to go back. <laughs> and I will also retreat. <laughs> and now is the question <laughs> Do you want to draw? <laughs> yeah. Well, so I don't know. Maybe the, the two young ladies, maybe they are friends. <laughs> uh, I don't think it's like that. I think that maybe Sansaya wants a draw because I saw the head to head score before. And there, I think that Chino was leading. So maybe we can see the head-to-head -head score between these two players a little bit later. Or any time the techniques have mm -hmm. it for <laughs> us ready. But if I remember correctly, then Chino was having more victories against Sansaya. Ah, yeah. And here it comes. Mm -hmm. So Sansaya won one game and yeah, Chino won two games. Well, okay, but this is not, not yeah. a disastrous course. No, it's not, but... I don't think in this type of tournament normally that the white player would normally be happy with a draw, but, well... You never know. I, I don't know, Sansaya had mm. a very difficult game yesterday. Maybe she's hap happy mm. to have a quick mm. draw. Mm. Okay. okay, but let's have another look at mm. the other head-to-head -head scores for the two taste bearings, because it's very interesting. So... We have Shongi against Elizabeth, and this is very interesting. Shongi won 11 games, and there were only two draws, and Elizabeth had two wins. So, mm -hmm. what to expect from today's oh, game? 11 wins. Yeah, 11 wins. But it's probably it's also rapid crazy. games, I guess. Or, um, yeah, it's mixed. Mm, okay. Okay, okay, this is a heavy then score. Maria against Humpy. Maria has. Five wins, okay. seven draws, and Humpy won 12 times. Oh. Okay, maybe this explains the very solid opening choice of Maria. <laughs> yeah, so uh, it's really interesting mm -hmm. to see the head-to-head mm -hmm. -head scores. Yeah. Okay, and then we have Alexandra against Dinara. Oh, this oh, is interesting. Mm -hmm. Two, oh. two, two. Yeah, Dinara, uh, it's very impressive that she held her own against um, Alexandra. Yeah, it's really mm -hmm. impressive, mm -hmm. yeah. And Anna against Nana. Anna won 14 times. They had 19 draws and 13 wins for Nana. So also very interesting. Mm -hmm. Both players very strong. Then we have Tronavalli against Alina. Tronavalli is a little bit in lead with 
four wins, three draws, and Alina has one victory. So also very exciting, and mm -hmm. we will see how the head-to-head -head scores will change in this tournament. Well, the game is very interesting between um, Elisabeth and Tan, mm -hmm. because as a bef just a game I discussed before with Roman, um, White played the very principled line to keep the pawn. <laughs> Took in f6, this is exactly what we discussed. And now to play um, bishop f3 to keep the pawn. This is the most principled way just not to give back this pawn. But on the other hand, black has a very strong black squared bishop. This is usually the hero in the king's Indian defense. Mm -hmm. Well, white might try, uh, black might try to um, regain the pawn, but um, probably it doesn't work out. And so she didn't do it just to show. Might try to play something now, let's say bishop f5. But the problem being that... Um, Rook e1? You come into a pin and then you have to play the very unpleasant move f5 mm. and would have a very bad pawn structure here. I mean, so I mean, it might be theoretically possible, but probably it's just bad in the end. So of course, it's not what Elizabeth wants with the sharp opening choice to defend the worst position. And she plays the much more... Ambitious move, bishop e5, just says, okay, I'm playing a pawn down, but I've got a bishop pair, and especially this <laughs> absolutely monster bishop here. Mm -hmm. And I think that black is a uh, good, good compensation here. And white now has to make a big choice, um, whether to go to the short or to the long side with the king. Both options are possible. In case white would go to the long side, then I'm sure that one basic plan for black would be to break open the position here with a6, b5, mm -hmm. or just to open also with pawn sacrifice, to open lines against the king. So I guess the more solid choice would be to play the short castle. But also here after moves like, let's say, queen g5, in some moment maybe queen f4, um, not just to highlight one idea of white plays king um, h1, then probably already black can sacrifice the bishop as after g h3. Queen of four, there will be a small problem on h2. <laughs> <laughs> Opposite colored mm -hmm. bishops in attack. <laughs> yeah, and mainly it shows how strong this bishop on e5 is. Yeah. It's a monster. It's really a monster. Mm -hmm. So basically, I like this, um, uh, the concept of, um, of Elizabeth, this pawn sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Now this is an interesting decision for white what to do with the king. I mean, if white would have lots of time, she might, but I don't think it's realistic. You might play g3, bishop g2, and then f4, and so on. But I think it's very slow, and black will get some tactical chances. Yeah, so we will see if the head-to-head mm -hmm. -head score will change mm -hmm. in favor to Elizabeth. Yeah, but I like Elizabeth's position. I would if I had a choice, I yes. think I would take the black side. Yeah, me too. You so convinced me. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice pawn sacrifice. <laughs> yeah, I also enjoy it. But normally I think <laughs> you don't like so much to sacrifice pawns, or do you? Uh, it's depending. If I receive very active pieces and initiative, then I enjoy it, yes. But yeah, I'm not like that materialistic <laughs> as Roman said <laughs> <laughs> he is. <laughs> so what about you? Well, in, in former times I, liked, I really like to sacrifice pawns for initiative and um, mm. later Later days, I think I became more cautious in this, but especially if you study the, the incredible games of the artificial intelligence, AlphaGo Zero, that is clearly shown that um, initiative is even much more important compared to mm -hmm. material than ever thought before. Sometimes AlphaGo Zero uh, um, sacrificed something like three pawns without any direct visible threats for it but just for very long-term initiative and space advantage and kingside attacking chances. So this shows that maybe material for a long time has been overestimated. Yeah, at least I can tell that in many games I just took a pawn for free, but then later on <laughs> it was not so great <laughs> and I lost <laughs> the game. So yeah, nowadays I rather want to keep my pieces active and yeah, don't take these pawns. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but I said, I'm curious what's going to happen, but I like Elizabeth's position. What, what does the engine say? It says equal, no, equal. 0.00. Okay. 0. Mm. Oh, okay, well, not equal is a fair 
But if, uh, yesterday I had some doubts about the, um, the strength of our engine. I don't know. It was some uh, showed some very strange things. But okay. But I think about equal chances is a fair assessment. Mm -hmm. Okay, here, uh, what happened here? Knight e5 is interesting because it, of course, it hits here c4. Mm -hmm. But f4 comes yeah, later. Yeah, but f4 will come. Does she want to go to c6 afterwards? Or yep. what's her plan? Probably f4 here, by the way, would be too early because black can play bish um, queen b6. Uh, and then bishop e3 comes knight g4, and this probably would be unpleasant for white. Mm -hmm. So white plays the preparatory move, um, king h1. And as I said, the problem with this bishop position here is the, um, is the pawn in c4. And here, of course, b3 probably would be pretty bad because of b5. And um, white cannot take because the knight is on pre. So white has to put the bishop to b3. And of course, this looks like a bit strange bishop position. But on the other hand, if white does have time to kick out the black knight again, then maybe it's totally OK. And she has the time, mm -hmm. yeah, as we've no, seen the game. Four, knight c6. Yeah, but also, I somewhat like the white position, because here, for me, the black piece position is a bit clumsy. Um, I would consider with white, maybe knight f3 here. Mm -hmm. But of course, there are many moves here. Bishop e3 Bishop is possible, e3 of course. Bishop e3 is also interesting. Probably not to change in c6, because this would... No, I, I don't want to change this here. Is harmonizing the black position. Yeah, it's helping black. Mm -hmm. I think the more, well, probably knight f3, but it must be kept in mind that maybe black can um, play knight a5. This would be a very principled move, but, but still knight f3, and they are there to push with e5 and put knight to e4. This would be mm -hmm. a typical um, attacking plan for white, and I think this looks pretty good for white. Well, but it's hard to say. The Sicilian positions can be very resilient. So, uh, yeah, and later, in a good moment, as mentioned before, that after e5, the bishop might drop back here and um, take part in the king side attack. So, it's mm -hmm. awesome. here, I would prefer the white side. Me too. I like to have some space. Mm -hmm. But still, of course, we're in a way we're crossing fingers for Dinara because she had such an unlucky, unlucky loss yesterday. So, yeah. It would be very good for her if she could um, score at least half a point today. I ah, see here it happened that the bishop came to f3 mm -hmm. after the seemingly modest move um, bishop e2, showing the idea. It happened as we thought. Queen exchange is the white the white concept, playing for a slightly better, slightly better ending. And I had similar positions, not in this variation, but I had similar positions in the. In the Tarash, Tarash variation of the um, of the French defense, as so when white plays third move knight d2 and black goes c5, then sometimes mm -hmm. this type of endings can arise. Yeah, and this bishop this puts quite unpleasant pleasure. Yeah. Uh, pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> the, the pleasure is probably more on the white side. <laughs> 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 the pressure <laughs> um, on the, um, the black queen side. Yeah. In some moment, black can hope to play e5, e4 in some moments, but here um, it's mm -hmm. not really realistic in the moment, because <laughs> especially not after king e7. Mm -hmm. But maybe now black in some moment can play g5, g4, I mean, who knows. Yeah, this position I had in one game. It's so funny. It like this exact position? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, this is interesting. Like out of the uh, um, bishop d3 variation against French defense. Mm -hmm. Because then later on you also like black takes on e4 and then you take with the bishop and then later you go back bishop f3. Mm -hmm. So ah, okay. this mm -hmm. can happen. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. And I enjoyed this end game. With white? Or? Yeah, with white, of course, mm -hmm. with white. Yeah. So what's the best plan here for white? Oh, yeah, just like she is playing. I like it. Putting pressure on b7 especially, then also moving with the knight. And yeah. Bring the rooks into the center or double it on the T line. Yeah, so what? But I would not be sure what's the best move for white now. Can bring the knight with knight c5. Or maybe rook h e1 with in some moments um, some idea to play knight d4 to f5. It's hard to say. Knight c5 to e4. But then probably g5 then. 
when black in any moment can play g5 to swap the bishops, but... <coughs> but I like to swap the bishops with white. Then I have the black squares mm -hmm. for my knight, and yeah, yeah maybe something works yeah, white is on the queen white side. White is slightly better, but I would not be sure what is the, the best plan for white. What would you play? Or bishop g3 immediately? No. It would be a pity to uh, give the only one black plays g5, probably. Um, I want to provoke some weaknesses. Like, I'm not sure. Like using the knight and maybe mm -hmm. forcing the opponent to play a6 or something like that. And then I have some weaknesses where I can jump in later. So you mean knight c5? Or yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe also later knight d4, knight b5, and then bishop c3 exchanging and maybe doing something with the knight later. But I think first I would just bring my second troop here in this position. Okay, let's just take a short look. It's quite interesting. I don't know. This type of, of um, half end ending without queens is often very, very difficult to to judge. Also for black, I mean, also black, I one idea would be just to change the rook on the D uh, on the D line to um, reduce the white pressure. The other idea would uh, would be to play rook b8. With the idea then to go um, develop the bishop to d7, or maybe also to play um, no, probably not b6, but this would be the next move. And white might play with knight d4, and then black has to watch out for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was my plan playing. Mm -hmm the knight to d4 maybe immediately i'm not sure also with the idea like knight d4 knight b5 mm -hmm. in some cases it's useful if you can provoke a6 especially yeah, after exchanging the bishops the point is black always has to check here and then play a6 then yeah no but i think black must be careful here this um mm -hmm. yeah that's what i like mm -hmm. about the end game mm -hmm. Maybe rook e1 is quite a relatively flexible move. Mm -hmm. Although it does have the disadvantage that if um, black goes g5, after bishop g3, you put away the pressure from the h line. So um, now let's say rook b8. And here's the question how much white does have, because here with the king on, on the long side, the pawn majority is not does not look so dangerous. But mm -hmm. maybe the idea is to play knight to a5 to hamper her the black development, because now it will be very yeah. difficult for black to free herself. The bishop cannot mm -hmm. move, the pawn cannot move. Yeah, th this is one of the reasons why I wanted to exchange the, the dark squared bishops, so that my knight has some ideas with mm -hmm. a5, c5. No, black can play g4 in a moment, but of course it's also a bit compromising. Maybe g4, knight e4, no, but... And I mean, and now white has a plan really to expand here. c4, b4, c5, and so... Yes. Yeah, I think it's interesting. I think altogether... White is of here is a little better. Mm -hmm. So I think this opening concept of Harika was quite successful. Yes. Yeah, because this move bishop e2 looks very harmless. Uh, but I think this was not the best uh, reaction no. by black to... Um, At least in, in my line with bishop d3, it's not the best idea mm. to take on d4 because of mm. this endgame after queen takes d4. It's just very pleasant for white and not easy to play for black. Uh, maybe sh maybe it would be better for black to play something like yeah. bishop e7 because if, if white changes on c5, then you have the option to play queen a5 check. and. Mm -hmm and regain the pawn in this way, and this. And I guess this should be quite okay for black. Okay, but it's another story. It's okay, so here we believe that white has um, some small advantage. So what happened here in the game? Where was... In the Scottish game. Where I made the first move, loading <laughs> up the pieces with some energy. <laughs> this energy leading to a boring ending. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Okay, uh, this is a typical move, I think, knight b5, 
You're taking yeah. C4, uh, C7 and some can regroup the knight to D4. But this is interesting now because I'm playing C6 instead of bishop E6. Mm -hmm. So then this knight B5 is never possible. Mm. Yeah. Very reasonable. But mm. it seems black is not afraid playing C5. Yeah, there's also the idea of black sometimes. Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. And, and, and she's B4. immediately uh, li oh. liquidating with, with B4. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering what's the idea if black just takes the pawn. I mean, of course, white can take back the pawn in a7. But, uh, but how can you win this game? <laughs> <afterwards>? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what I just wanted to say, can this be a winning attempt? I don't um, believe I mean, that I can take on a7 now, both with yeah. and bishop. But, but even though black does have slightly worse pawn structure. Yeah, it's bishop it bear. Yeah. It doesn't really look like a winning attempt. And the pawns then are uh, only on one mm -hmm. side, so it's mm -hmm. <laughs> it's really difficult mm -hmm. to win. Yeah, this must be extremely drawish. Yes. Okay, but anyway, black played bishop to b6. Uh -huh. so maybe also black playing is for a win. <laughs> maybe. But okay, if white doesn't want to lose, you can take in c5 and play knight c7 for the bishops of different color. Mm-hmm. Ah, but I'm sure she is playing for a win. I yeah. don't think that Maria will exchange here. But probably she won't, uh, she won't allow c4, or does she? No, I don't want c4. Hmm. Strange. Yes. Okay, but still black um, does have to make, a dis uh, to make a decision here. Ah, it's white to move, sorry. <laughs> I mean, white maybe to play c3 with white to have a square for the bishop and. I think they might just to go to d6 in some moment with the knight and to play for the square and f5, but it doesn't look very convincing. Well, as I said, if white, is, if white would be really playing for a draw, then it would be an option to play this in knight c7. But um, I don't think I would, I would do this because... Yeah, but don't you like the center for black? Yeah, yeah as, as, uh, as I mean, then probably in fact black is a little better. I mean, so probably this is not true. Yeah. Even though they're bishops of different color, I think this would mm -hmm. be better for black. Uh, this is the idea also, like in the other line, in this opening, that even with opposite color bishops, black is attacking... Mm -hmm. Usually black is attacking on the queen side, <laughs> at least in the other variation that I play most of the time. Ah, so no, maybe, a, maybe a solid plan would be to play b takes c5 and after bishop c5 to play something with c3 and put a knight to d4 then. Mm. I like this one, yes. But still I think black is definitely not worse. I can try to put pressure on c3 and... Um, mm. Pawn. I'm not so happy about the pawns here. Okay, maybe a4 is anyway useful move. Okay, but this bishop also is not so good. So it's and then bishop uh, bishop b6. I can hit it with a5. Then yeah, I think maybe this is an interesting setup here for white. Mm -hmm. In some moment I go to d4 with the knight because if black has to change on d4 for some reason, then white might be really a bit better. Yeah, I think this is probably uh, the most solid way to play with white. I like your line. Ah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I feel responsible after making the first move. <laughs> to defend the white position. <laughs> At least not to be worse. <laughs> yeah, I think take on c5 and c3, this looks reasonable. Mm -hmm. And then to play a4. Yeah, because the other line with the knight to c7 and then exchanging the bishop on e6, I didn't like. No, then black has a strong center. Yeah, this would be from... Um, by amateurs, uh, more amateurs, of course, professional players would not do this, but for amateurs who are afraid when playing against a strong opponent, this is a typical way um, for a sure loss that you play some si uh, something like this. This line with knight c7 takes e6 because you think this increases your drawing chances, but in fact just gives your opponent a slightly better position <laughs> without risk and <laughs> <laughs> yes, mostly the surest way to lose. Opposite colored bishops are not always draw. No, absolutely <laughs> not. 
Okay, so here we think it's about equal altogether. Mm -hmm. Okay, here is some. It's a nice Sveshnikov game. Oh, okay, it's interesting. Black does did not repeat. Yeah, I told Jenna. you she is playing for, mm -hmm. for victory. Yeah. yeah, there's another idea that we showed before. This queen b7 is a typical square here in the Sveshnikov um, for the queen because it. Now black has the positional um, threat to take in d5, and as we said, if white you know, in the end has to take back with the pawn, then black can be very happy. So white plays rook a d1 to be able to um, to take back with the piece, and black plays the typical attacking move b4 here on the queen side. At first sight, man white might think that after um, that white can play c4 to reinforce here the, uh, the knight, but in fact now this bishop would be very bad. And later, there are some typically plans in the right moment to regroup the bishop. And if it would arrive one day on d4, this would be very bad news for white. <laughs> and also, black has, does have the plan to play f5, which, however, this can be sometimes um, double-edged because it might uh, activate the white bishop. Mm -hmm. But black can also to play g6, f5. So. Yeah, now you told us some nice plans for black, but what should white do? Uh, yeah, exactly. That's the problem. <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> I must say, don't sympathize too much with the white position. I mean, one typical plan, I don't know whether white should maybe really play c4 first, would be to play queen g3 and then bishop g4 to um, at least, not maybe not immediately, but uh, to have the option to change here the, the bishop. But of course, as discussed before, black would not change. and take here is rather double-edged because it um, gives black control over the d5 square. But on the other hand, you would not like too much allowing black to take here. If you have to take back with the pawn, then black can invade on the b-line and attack the weak pawn on c3. Mm -hmm. You don't want to change in b4. So maybe still once white, probably with white, at least in the blitz game, I would play c4 too. Yeah, I would definitely mm. play c4. I don't want to give it's up the b-line. It's not my dream move, but... Yeah, but I think it's still okay for white. I mean, to implement this plan with bishop d8, b6 is not so easy because the pawn in d6 is weak. And now for black it's also not so easy what is the right the right setup. Or maybe it is for Zvezhnikov players. I mean, as I said, a typical plan would be to play g6, f5. Or, mm -hmm. or maybe in this position also f5 immediately. Because here if white... If white takes, then the bishops will be very strong. For example, if the queen goes to g3 and later on bishop c2 can be annoying for the rook. Probably bishop h6. The black, black bishops are also quite good. So after f5, in many cases, white plays bishop to f3. Because black definitely does not want to take here because the bishop takes back. Yeah. And our usually typical move would be g6 to keep the tension. And this is quite interesting mm -hmm. because now white... Ah, no, I don't know. Maybe this doesn't work in this moment. Sorry, because e takes f5, then it's um, um, nasty for the black queen. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Anyway, Sansaya played c4 in this position, like we expected. Ah, yeah, okay. Yeah, this is for sure the most solid move. Mm -hmm. And I also said f5 is a bit double-edged because it might activate the um, the white bishop. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we will have a look later mm -hmm. and see what Chin is planning for black, if she is following your mm -hmm. ideas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe first to play g6 and I mean if black plays g6 then um, maybe white should play in a prophylactic way now to play bishop f3 then. Just fighting against the five, and, and after a five, just wait. Well, in this moment, I think a five doesn't really work because um, well it's not good at least because now because of the yeah because black would like the very much to retake with the pawn and then this <laughs> 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 yeah, we're not giving up our queen. No, but maybe in this position, black should first play king h eight and then a five. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure that the black position is absolutely okay here. Yeah, I would go for this idea with g6, f5. It's typical mm -hmm. and yeah, I enjoy first it. Yeah, first king h8 because the queen is quite well. Although also the black queen can also switch to, by the way, um, to a7. Maybe an a7 is a quite good square also for the queen. 
Mm -hmm. Because then you have no more problems with the bishop diagonal. I must say, I somehow would slightly prefer black, but mostly because I played this position many years ago with black and I quite liked it. But I also prefer black in the Sveshnikov. Well, engine gives about equal. And I think she made a move. Yeah, it's B3. Oh, no, B3 is Kay. interesting. Mm -hmm. I thought about the move, but um, probably white will go A3. It's interesting. I mean, the pawn can be strong or can be weak. It's hard to say. And it does have in some lines the disadvantage that white can regroup the knight. So otherwise he's stuck and yeah so for me at first sight it looks like <laughs> briefly is helping just white mm -hmm. giving some square for the knight no i don't like b3 too much but yeah, i but think it's maybe her idea is to attack the c4 pawn and well but the c4 pawn is very very well protected yeah it's it takes some time <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but you no. Know, well, uh, maybe in some cases, if White regroups the bishop, but mm -hmm. yeah, that's what I mean. Well, I don't know. Somehow, I would have preferred the other plan. With yeah, G6, B3 H8. is very interesting. I wouldn't play this move. No. Okay, well, it's not bad, of course, but it's maybe a matter of taste. Mm -hmm. What happened here? I think we left around here. Yeah, bishop b3, this was prepared by this move, um, h3, so the knight cannot hit here. And this uh, type of position, <coughs> there's usually some rather slow maneuvering, because for both sides it's difficult to do something. Mm -hmm. Because any time that white gets active here with f4, it also gives some counter chances for black. So usually both sides treat this type of positions very um, very carefully. It's rather slow play and yeah. until the black black queen retreats, maybe hinting that black would be happy with a draw, maybe. Yeah, and it's not easy because if white wants to do something in this position, then most probably in some moment um, she has to play f4. Mm. Yeah, this position is very interesting. I also had these Marozzi structures and like, as you said, it looks so great for white with the space advantage and everything, but somehow it's so difficult to find any plans. And as soon as you try to attack with a four, for example, then there's always some counterplay with black. It's yeah, really but difficult. I yeah, but a5, I like this. It's just mm -hmm. normal, um, um, nice positional move. It's anyway improves the white position a bit. It makes it impossible for black to spawn break b5, um, b7, b5. And you've got the idea to play with knight a4. Yeah. Knight a4 to b6, because I don't think that black really wants to change the knight with his bishop, uh, her bishop. So what will black do against this idea, bringing the knight to b6? Well, black can play bishop c6 and knight d7. I mean, that's That's what I wanted to do, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so is it a good idea to because bring the knight to d7? At least if white plays knight a4, I think so. Anyway, this might be a good regrouping for black. Because I don't think white wants to change in c6. Mm. I guess it's also quite possible to retake with the pawn and then mm -hmm. yeah. chances in the... Well, unlike white could put a knight to b6, but as it said, then probably black can play knight e7. Yeah, I don't know, this is after bishop c6. And the next move, knight to d7, and the black bishop can go to f6. Some mm -hmm. typical regrouping. Yeah. I think black is black is quite okay here. Oh, but the engine likes white. But uh, maybe only because of the space advantage. Mm -hmm. Like as I said, it looks so great for white, but actually mm. there's it's not so special. I think it's okay for black. Yeah, I must say I would like the black maybe in the black position slightly more. Sure. I always prefer white. <laughs> <laughs> I only have these <laughs> positions with <laughs> white. <laughs> mm, yeah, that's interesting. Maybe in some good moment white can push b4, b5, but of course it's very risky because the pawn in on c4 will become extremely weak. Mm. 
Or maybe white should change in c6. And after b takes c6, maybe to play with b, then to play with b4. And this is quite interesting position. Well, this, this might be good for white. Um, because now it's really difficult for black to do something. And in some good moment, white can consider to play with b5 then. Yeah. Yeah, this is interesting. So maybe. Okay, but is it possible to play d5? This is the question. If it's possible, it's fine. I mean, because b4 is hanging on. Yeah, and I just want to free my pieces. Yeah, but after c takes d5, um, I think it's dangerous for black, and also a6 will be hanging later. This looks pretty risky for me to mean. Do you want to play c takes d5? Or? <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> But I think there's no real alternative. I mean, if you're taking b4, then why takes an e6? This must be. No, I don't want to take on b4. I'm just not sure how to take on d4, uh, d5. Yeah, okay. Let's take with the c pawn. Yeah, I think this is the. No, probably why it takes back. I mean, you can play something like rook d8, but if I take on a6, this is. Hmm. takes before but rook c1 I think well the engine doesn't like it I just um, think it's uh, no, I think even slightly better for black it's interesting mm -hmm. I don't see why but is also a5 then a problem later like weak we take on before I must it uh, admit I thought that white uh, can just play rook e to c1. Mm -hmm. But it seems. And now. I'm not 100% sure. Queen d8, I think. Mm hmm. But if I want, I can always take in a6. I mean, yeah. Yeah, this was probably not the best idea. I think you have the queen takes a6. It's. Yeah, I don't. I wanted to take on d5 or rook a8. Pooh, I'm not sure what I want to do. Okay, it's a bit far now. Yeah. <laughs> well, but this this shows that it can explode any moment and get very sharp mm -hmm. and concrete. So. She played rook f d8. Yeah, this is a very solid move. Mm -hmm. So here's the, would be set up to put the bishop to e8. If you don't want to change the bishop, and then to play knight to d7. Mm -hmm. This yeah. is very solid. But on the other hand, white does have the option not to play knight a4. And now's the question, probably you don't want to allow knight b6, do you? So probably black will take now, no? Mm -hmm. Can't I allow it? Like bishop e8 and then knight b6, rook b8, and afterwards knight d7? Or is it just too mm -hmm. slow? No, um, I think it's possible. Yeah, but white can regroup, for example, with bishop e3 and knight mm -hmm. going somewhere and then. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, protecting b6. Well, I think it's not dramatic, but. Maybe this mm. is a bit uh, slightly better for white. Yeah. No, this is annoying for black. I don't mm -hmm. want this. Well, but probably the idea is to take on the. Um, and now to play, maybe now to play knight d7. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, this looks reasonable. Because now white has to be a bit careful about this. <coughs> Probably has to treat, retreat with the rook somehow. Or do you think that instead of knight d7, also d5 is an idea? Yeah, of course, this is always an idea in the structures. And usually white has to um, take and play um, and play e5, but here probably want to jump into e4. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, if this works for black, then it's the question whether knight f5 is possible. Well, uh, this this already can be very tactical. Probably just to show what I mean, knight f5, and I'll probably the critical move is queen takes e5. Another question being if. Um, yeah, we have a check on c5. Mm -hmm, exactly, but check on c5, then is bishop e3. But queen, queen c3, c3 and. Yeah. Everything's okay mm -hmm. for black. Probably. Um. Or even very good for black, <laughs> I'm <laughs> not sure. <laughs> I like it. Well, maybe it's not entirely the end of the story, but maybe rook d1. Yeah, but probably it's okay for black. Now, yeah, interesting. Mm -hmm. But this shows because from the, um, I just think this is quite a good illustration, because from the outside, these positions look very harmless. At any moment, it can become very sharp and tactical if black plays d5, for example. Mm -hmm. This always has to be calculated. Okay, I think about altogether equal chances about. Yes. Okay, here, of course, a3, this is normal. Or rook fch. I mean, that was your proposition to put mm -hmm. pressure on. Pressure on c4. Yeah, maybe it was uh, was quite interesting. Maybe now this idea to bring the bishop back to d8 and in some moment. This is my dream plan here. <laughs> 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 yeah, maybe in some moment also to play a4 to fix this pawn in b3. Yes. And it's the, yeah, the question being this knight c3 move. Somehow I like this knight c3 b5 idea. Is this possible? Bishop takes c4. Ah, sorry. sorry uh, sorry, this was not intended. <laughs> ah, this was the idea of rook c8. Okay, now yeah. uh, now I understand it. It's <laughs> just it's basically prophylaxis <laughs> against knight c3. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, then maybe this is quite a deep concept. Got this b3 connected with rook fc8 because yeah. otherwise, if she does not play this move, I think this maneuver knight c3 b5 can be pretty uh, unpleasant. And now it will be difficult for white to um, to move this knight here. Yeah, this is very interesting. Nice idea. And also difficult, what's the plan for white? Yeah, I if I cannot play knight c3. Plan. What would you do? Well, uh, under other circumstances, I would play queen g3 and bishop g4. Mm -hmm. But here, then, in fact, we really will have problems. Yeah, and I really have no idea what white should do in the next moves. Yeah. The only idea I have is someone playing f4, but it's helping mm, the bishop well, there, mm -hmm. so I don't want to play this move. But what else? So in the moment, black might consider to take in d5 even after f4. Mm. Yeah. I really don't want to play f4, but what else? <laughs> no, yeah, and also concretely, black can take here, and again, you cannot retake really because. Um, no, no, I I wanted mm -hmm. to play maybe g3 and then f4. I like. oh, prefer the black position. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Still, okay, I mean, also black has to make progress. I mean, white plays h3 and maybe hinting that he wants to go bishop g4. Mm -hmm. I mean, this I think this would be a normal move. Yeah. And our next move, bishop g4. Because if white manages to do this, then uh, in this case you might even consider taking an e6, and then you retreat the knight to c3. And mm -hmm. then out of a sudden the white position would be pretty good. Yeah, but black can easily play something like queen, queen e6, or for example putting more pressure mm -hmm. on c4. I'm not sure if a6 is the right square, but like putting more pressure on c4. Mm. No, no, of course this is... Ah. 
So one more, uh, sorry, it's, it's a bit confusing here with the duration. We said A3, and now I think this is a very important moment. It's, it's the game is sharper than it looks because if white can play bishop g4 without problems, um, then it would be pretty good. So Veronica's um, idea sounds very reasonable um, to keep an eye on the c4 pawn. On the other hand, now I can play the queen, and then maybe c5 might be a threat. Mm. <laughs> yeah, that's why I'm thinking mm. that a6 is not the best square, so maybe it's c6. C6. Yeah. But then maybe there will be tricks with ninety seven. I know, <laughs> but I'm taking care of this. <laughs> <laughs> ah yeah, if white plays queen g3, then you have exactly this move bishop d8. This anyway um, might be a nice idea. Yes. I like it for black. Yeah, yeah. me also. No, but still probably queen g3 is then. Yes. And it's also a good idea to gain the c1 square for the rook. So as mm. soon as the bishop leaves. Yeah, because if black plays h6, then I will play h4 for sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, what do you do now? Bishop d8? Uh? Yeah, what else? Maybe this is a moment where I might consider f4. Well, at least we found some active mm -hmm. ideas for white now. Mm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not that I really want to play h f4, but um, not really. But if bishop g4 really doesn't work, I still wonder what's possible maybe to sacrifice somehow, but. Um, um, to sacrifice the c pawn, but I don't see why it's possible. F4, F4. <laughs> okay. Somewhat it feels wrong. <laughs> <laughs> feels wrong. Okay, maybe double. Uh, yeah, double maybe because line. of the b2 pawn later. Mm -hmm. Maybe just rook d2 and rook fd1. Is more solid. Mm -hmm. But still, I like the black position. And the yeah. The engine also has slight advantage for black. So. Okay. So interesting what mm -hmm. Sansaya will play. Mm -hmm. What happened here? Oh, she played c3 immediately. Immediately. This means she is not afraid of c4. Okay, but this is fair, but in this moment, yeah, understandable, because yeah. here, here she can, without yeah, any problems, yeah, yeah. Um, get access to d4, so the c3 is flexible, this, um, but it's exactly, um, and I'm sure if black now would play h a6, then now in this moment, white takes in c5, mm -hmm. and after bishop c5, now knight d4, I think this must and be the idea. beautiful square for mm -hmm. the knight. So black plays flexible move, rook a c eight. But it does have to draw back if black plays a six later then the um, the pawn will be hanging. Yeah, and also white can't take on c five so easily now because the rook can take mm -hmm. and then there is no knight d four because c three is weak. Exactly. Hmm. Yeah, I like the other way of playing like immediately taking on c five and then mm -hmm. 94. Yeah, this is it's right because now black has the option to take with the rook. Yes. Yeah, so maybe the other way to take was better, but. Mm. Okay, but if white wants, I mean, um, I think maybe it's not the best, but maybe white should also take time just now in the moment to make um, air for the king, but no, but it's a question with a6 is right or not. Let's say I go a4. a6. a6. b takes c5. Probably rook takes rook c5. Rook takes. Rook but takes also a6 is now hanging. Exactly, yeah, so this, is, this is the idea. Now yeah. the rook takes c3 to take on a6. Then mm -hmm. No, it's okay for white. I mm -hmm. like it. Yeah, this is okay Having for white. Having the a pawn. Mm -hmm. But this would mean that maybe it was, uh, it was okay how Maria played it.
Yeah, somehow like the A4 move, I don't know why exactly. But <laughs> I understand why. <laughs> because you want to play A5, right? Mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah, to do something active and also somehow to kind of force Black's hand. I mean, I mean, Black now has to react. I mean, of course, well, Black can take on B4, but then uh, maybe this might be a problem now to play A6 because then the white, is, um, the white knight is losing a bit of control. Unless I can play a5 now. That's what I wanted to do. Oh yeah, and the bishop has no square. Mm. And after a b5, a b, this might be quite good for white. Maybe. And dangerous pawn on b6. If we can keep it, this is not so clear. I mean mm. um, and also white has still a back rank weakness. Because now I cannot keep it really with rook a, well I will get this one, but on rook a6 there's bishop c8, bishop and c8. or rook d6 maybe. And if I take here, then maybe I will lose here the um, pawn in mm -hmm. b4. Okay, but it's a very concrete line, so it's hard to say then. And here it seems as if white, black does have a very bad structure. But it seems as if white is losing a pawn. But I mean, probably it's playable even if white loses a yeah. pawn. Yeah, putting all, all the rooks on maybe a5, c5, yeah, yeah, exactly. and then later just mm -hmm. take the b5 pawn. Exactly, and maybe now to make some air for the king at first. Or king f1 immediately. Or rook c1, yeah. I wanted to play rook c1 mm -hmm. first. Mm -hmm. And just attacking the b5 pawn, and I don't think that black mm -hmm. is able to protect it. Yeah, I also think white has enough compensation for yeah, the pawn. Yeah, for sure. And probably we'll get back something. Yeah. And then we have a um, bishop mm -hmm. endgame. Well, okay, but altogether I think it's roughly equal again. Mm -hmm. What happened here? Probably a lot. Um, this you all saw these moves. Okay, yeah. Also, our other idea, mm -hmm. putting both rooks ah, yeah. on the D. Uh, this was the moment uh, when we were our favorite move was rook to E1. Yeah, but we were and also thinking about mm -hmm. uh, doubling the rooks on mm -hmm. the D line. Yeah, with rook D4, this looks um, yeah. active, of course. And black played the most solid plan that we discussed, just to change one pair of rooks. But maybe the idea is to play something active here. Oh yeah, I, was, I, <laughs> 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 I want to say rook c4. Yeah, rook of c4. Of course, this is much more ambitious. Very interesting idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it might be that black is under some pressure here. Probably bishop d6 or. or what d6. else? What I didn't really understand is why black went bishop c7. Yeah, this is a good question. Maybe she wanted to prepare later b6, mm -hmm. but... Um, yeah, but now there are some squares for the knight, and also now the rook is attacking again. Mm -hmm. I didn't really understand the move bishop c7 before. No, I also think that black is under some pressure here. And instead of this move, she could have played... I think rook d8 immediately. If I can just quickly go back, like I'm in mean this moment here. After castling, she mm -hmm. played bishop c7. Yeah, this move was a bit Which strange. I don't 100% mm -hmm. understand. Not even 20%, I guess. Oh. <laughs> 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 yeah, because it's losing time, and especially in these positions, it's. No, but I guess she was afraid of bishop, bishop, bishop g3. g3? Yeah, it's possible, of course. I think this is, the, this is the reason. And she cannot play, she can never free the bishop because she can also not play rook b8 because then uh, it would be even worse. I think this is the reason that um, black did not see how to entangle the pieces. Maybe rook so d8. Maybe if rook d8 and rook d8. take. Mm, maybe rook d8. Then we'll take. Probably. Yes, so, yeah. And from bishop takes, yeah. or king takes. Mm. It's basically the same. 
king takes, for example. Probably check. check. And king e7 back. Probably to e7 or to e8, maybe, I don't know. I think e7 is okay. Because then the knight is still pinned. But yeah, but white wanted to play bishop g3, right? I mm -hmm. mean, that's what we are discussing right now. Ah yeah, exactly. But here it's bishop g3. Yeah, and now we need to find some solution, or we accept that bishop c7 was the best move. Naja, yeah, probably, because here this is very unpleasant for black. Mm. It's also threatening um, c4, c5, for example. And the bishops are extremely strong here. So maybe this was a necessary prophylactic move, bishop c7. Um, yeah, this position looks I'm very bad for black, but... I'm planning to play something like a knight somewhere and then f6, e5. Mm -hmm. And then also bring my bishop later on on e6 mm -hmm. when it's possible. H what about knight e8? Protecting d6 square and then playing f6 mm -hmm. and e5. Yeah, probably if white wants to do something, should push his pawns. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like c4. Mm -hmm. Do I have time for f6 now? Or now bishop c7? You know, that was also mm -hmm. my second idea. Yeah, okay, that's right. This is some quite solid, solid setup. Mm -hmm. Maybe c5. Yeah, okay, but at least I solved this problem with the bishop. Mm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I understand. Mm. And I guess no. bishop c7 immediately mm. is probably just stronger. Like she played it in mm -hmm. the game. Yeah. Oh, she went back to b6 now. Mm. Yeah, but this is some kind of weird. I don't know. It's weird if bishop c7 is mm. the best yeah. move before and then you have to go back. It's losing so many tempos. I guess that now a4, uh, a4, a5 can be, mm -hmm. can be unpleasant. Yes. After a4, maybe she has to play a5, and this is something I think she does mm -hmm. not really want to do. Yeah, so somehow I preferred our position before. Mm -hmm. yeah, Even if right. the knight e8 was a bit strange, mm -hmm. but if it's solving the problems, mm -hmm. it's okay. Yeah, anyway, I like the white position. Yeah, yeah. As I told you, I really enjoy this endgame. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Okay. Mm. So see what's happened here. And they are still thinking Maria against Tampi. Oh no, A4 was played actually. Okay, nice. Stefan, I think you are happy now because Maria played your move A4. Yes. <laughs> it seems <laughs> like you have some kind of connection after making your first move. <laughs> Yeah, hopefully it's good. I mean, if it was a bad move, then it will feel terrible <laughs> 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 that the hypnotized turn into a <laughs> into a blunder. But so far you are mm -hmm. satisfied, right? Well, let's look what does th was that this the engine bar say? Oh, it's about equal. Yeah. Okay, so poo, so it wasn't a blunder at least. <laughs> so I think it's a good time mm -hmm. for a short break. Mm -hmm, yes. And then we will be back and watch this <laughs> great games today. Yeah, have fun with our image films that we prepared full of love and dedication for you. <laughs> 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 Even though the two of them are in German language, but with English subtitles. <laughs> See you soon. <laughs>
möchten Sie auf innovative Weise die Qualität Ihrer Entscheidungen verbessern, die besten Strategien der Schachgroßmeister nutzen, auch wenn Sie selbst vielleicht kein Schachspieler, keine Schachspielerin sind, sich vor schwerwiegenden Planungsfehlern schützen, Ihre Intuition bestmöglich in Ihren Planungs- und Entscheidungsprozess einfließen lassen. Oder suchen Sie einfach einen inspirierenden Keynote-Vortrag für Ihre nächste Veranstaltung. Dann haben Sie viel gemeinsam mit Unternehmen wie Lufthansa Cargo, wie BMW, wie E.ON oder der Bayerischen Staatskanzlei. Überall dort konnte ich schon in Form von Vorträgen oder Workshops die wichtigsten Konzepte und Ideen unseres Strategiemodells Königsplan vermitteln. Hat Sie das neugierig gemacht? Dann freue ich mich auf Ihre Anfrage. Viele Informationen sind auch auf unserer Homepage www.königsplan.com zu finden. Kinder in sozialen Brennpunkten haben es besonders schwer. Sie müssen oft sowohl mit sprachlichen als auch häuslichen Problemen kämpfen. Wenn vielen von ihnen keine erfolgreiche schulische Karriere gelingt und sie später beruflich abgehängt sind, wird das zu einem großen gesellschaftlichen Problem und birgt enorme Gefahren für uns alle. Wir glauben, dass unser Schachtraining nach allen Erfahrungen der letzten 15 Jahre mit bis zu 10.000 geförderten Grundschulkindern ein wunderbares und innovatives Mittel ist, um hiergegen zu steuern. Unser Königsplan für Kinder fördert auf spielerische Weise. Die Kinder lernen, sich besser zu konzentrieren, sie werden kreativer und sie erleben, wie man vielfältige Probleme flexibel löst. All dies ist kein theoretischer Stoff, sondern wirkt sich unmittelbar positiv auf die schulische Entwicklung aus. Vor allem zeigen wir diesen Kindern, dass wir an sie glauben und geben damit den Glauben an sich selbst. Und das ist die allerwichtigste Gabe für ihre weitere Entwicklung. Um all dies fortzusetzen, benötigen wir Ihre Unterstützung. Mit 150 Euro können Sie ein Grundschulkind über ein ganzes Jahr hinweg fördern. Unsere Personalkosten werden von unserem Stiftungsgründer Roman Kohlig getragen, sodass Ihre Spende voll und ganz in diese wichtigen Projekte fließt. Dafür im Namen der Münchner Schachstiftung und natürlich unserer Schachkinder ein ganz großes Dankeschön an Sie.
So hello, we are back to our commentary and now the games are really getting more and more exciting. The tension is mounting and we take a look at one game where really very much happened since we had the last look between Tan Zhong Ji and, um, and Elizabeth Pitts. And we left the game in this position when we said that black is quite good compensation for the sacrificed pawn because this king's Indian bishop on e5 um, is extremely strong. And we said before that the long castle can be pretty dangerous because black will open up lines against the white king. And that the short castle will be dangerous because black can attack with queen g5 with some sacrifice letters also. So um, Tan solved the problem in quite a radical way. Um, king of one, very king of interesting one, yeah, move. Um, she, she, um, didn't castle to any side, but put the king here to f1. And, um, well, believing in the stability, the solidity of her position. Elizabeth plays h5, so maybe hinting with h4 to clamp down the black squares. So she answered with f4. Now Elizabeth, very logical, making use of the fact that the white rooks are not connected mm -hmm. to open the center. And Tan. This would have been a small surprise, but maybe she was afraid that black might even just play f4, because then it's for white, it's very difficult to activate the pieces then. Mm. Maybe then the bishop to g4, or, um, or they wouldn't be entirely sure, but anyway, she played ef, which is very principled. Bishop f5. Mm -hmm. I'm and thinking very so. interesting move, knight e4 yeah, here. Yeah, knight e4 is surprising to me also. The question is, what's about bishop e4? Ah, okay, bishop e4 doesn't work. This is funny. Bishop e4 doesn't work because of the bishop c3, bishop f5, unfortunately. That's <laughs> queen e1. <laughs> That's the problem when you're mm. not castling. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that would have been the punishment for not castling. So this explains probably why she put the knight to e4. Of course, she might retreat with the queen, but then the black bishops would be very powerful. I mean, still the same queen d2. Would have been an option, but okay. But anyway, ma many interesting things happened. She played knight to e4. 
and well, giving back basically a pawn on b2. Well, rook e1 looks very logical. Mm -hmm. Queen goes to g7. This is a very nice a battery of um, of queen and bishop. Yeah, and now the mm -hmm. idea behind king f1, of course, mm -hmm. was playing g3 and king g2. Yeah, also the moves are very logical now. Black mm -hmm. doubles in the e-line, putting maximum pressure on e4. I must say I would be very nervous if I were in the white position. Yeah, me too. Who oh, I really mm. don't like this pin. <laughs> <laughs> and it's some kind of cross pin. Mm -hmm. And black is not even a pawn down, I mean. Yeah. Wow, this must be very good for black. Yeah, I really so like black's position. Yeah, having the bishop, a bishop can, pair. The bishop can return here. Mm -hmm. and, and even after changing queens, in, um, let's say with queen d4 or something like this, then this must be pretty good for black. What will white play? Is maybe the idea to play rook e2, rook, rook h e1, and mm -hmm. then somehow queen b3 or something and free yourself, or is there anything else? Yeah, doubling rooks looks very logical because otherwise it's not um, clear how to get rid of the pin. And by the way, if I see it right, there might be also a concrete threat to play, um, possible in a moment to play g5 and, and, um, and after h takes g5 to play queen g6 to putting maximum pressure on e4. Mm. The novice that works because there's a counter attack on yeah, the bishop queen on b2. Yeah, queen b3 and attacking mm -hmm. the bishop. But Ooh. black has no hurry basically. Black can first play bishop d4, b6 maybe. Put the bishop to b6 and mm -hmm. also in some lines to pressure against f2. I would be really scared with white. Yeah, absolutely. But probably your pr I like your proposition for white just to double rooks on the on the e line, yeah. just to fortify this critical point because here the, mm -hmm. the action definitely is around here. So okay, let's say rook e two. The most probably will do something with the bishop. I mean, it's unpleasant if it's hanging around. Bishop d four. D four and later on b six. Yeah, why not? Mm -hmm. Unless you're afraid that something will happen here, but I think... Mm, that's okay. Now this would be a very hot position. Well, the white idea probably would be now to... Um, now it's queen to b3. Unpin or queen b3 or d2, I don't know. Oh yeah, or d2, yes, of course. Also yeah, possible. Also. Well, the problem being that it's not so clear how black can increase the pressure here against mm -hmm. the... I mean, what's the black plan here? Maybe in some moment if the bishop is in b6. Ah. To make pressure on the f-line, because now it has um, to switch with rook f8 and um, switch to the f-line. But then there might be some tricks with knight f6 in a moment, so this is, this is a very tense position. Let's see white white on pins. I don't know, somehow it looks good for black, but I also don't see the, the clear plan to make progress. Because all the black pieces are posted very well. Mm -hmm. That's the old saying of my friend Klaus Bischoff. If all pieces are posted well, that's a very bad sign. <laughs> 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 because in this moment, <laughs> it's not clear what to do to improve them. <laughs> Usually then mm. you need to do something with your pawns. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, well, but here it's not so... Yeah, here I don't see so which easy. pawn. I mean, there is a pawn break with c6, but um, oh. it doesn't look too good. No. Yeah. Not easy. Well, probably black should switch somehow to the f-line, but um, then you have to watch out for knight f6 check. Yeah, okay, king h8, mm -hmm. for example, then there is no check. Well, but the white position is very, very silly and somehow. Hmm. And here it comes, my move, rook e2, what else? Yeah, this looks very logical. So is there a better plan than putting the bishop to b6? Maybe this plan is not so convincing. I think black has to do something right now. 
like using the time now that everything is still pinned. Do you think that g5 could be a good idea somewhere? Is g5 and queen g6 idea you mean? Or? Mm -hmm. It's the only active plan I see. Yeah, this was, but um, but even here, no, white, uh, uh, white would be in time even just to defend the knight with rook hg1 and then, mm -hmm. so I don't think this works in this moment. Also bishop h5 maybe somewhere. I'm not sure if it's working. Yeah. But here on queen g6, I can always play rook. Yeah, but also h5 is hanging. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah, no. The white could also take here. Yeah, it's no. not working. No. Hmm. Yeah, this is really interesting question somehow. The, the black position definitely looks um, quite attractive, but I must admit that I don't see how to improve it. Mm. This is really a good, good place for this bishop bishop quote because <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about the ending to play something with queen d4, but mm -hmm. yeah, this could be an idea: exchanging queens and going for a bishop pair endgame. But maybe white, well, yeah, okay, just to give it a try. But maybe white can play queen c2. Oh no, e4 is hanging now, so. So probably white has to change. Yeah, we need to. Mm -hmm. I think this is at least relatively safe variation for black. I don't think mm -hmm. that black can ever, ever be in danger here. Yeah. Okay, let's see. White doubles. And now king comes. Yeah, king g7 maybe. Yes. Just here, white king some g7. tricks. With, um, I think it's a good idea to exchange the queens. Well, King G7 might be a blunder because of Knight takes D6. <laughs> yeah. Oh no. <laughs> That's these positions are tricky with the um King F8. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Nice. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, now also for white it's not so easy because changing all the rooks, this ending should be somewhat better for black, I think, with the two mm -hmm. bishops then. So but probably if white, white only keeps the position and just is waiting with the king, what should well black okay, do? But moving with maybe at once at once the a pawn, as we learned from Alpha Go Zero. <laughs> yeah. White, uh, white was absolutely nothing. Then we yes. push the pawn to a three, and then and then maybe come <laughs> over with the, with the rook the other side. I think this should be a little better for black then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would go for this end game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> of course. <laughs> of course. I mean, if <laughs> you know me, then <laughs> <laughs> you know the that I lover. would love to exchange <laughs> queens anytime it's possible. <laughs> Stranger can't say exactly why I want to exchange queens somewhere. I don't know. No, because the black queen can't do anything. And I don't know, this white queen, it will be flexible in the mm -hmm. future. And then all the black squares, they only belong to black because mm -hmm. there is no bishop and no queen left. Yeah, queen d4, I think. Yeah. It's a reasonable move because if it really forces the exchange of queens, then black is absolutely out of danger and this thing can, mm -hmm. in the long run, it will be a quite a slow game then. But um, mm -hmm. also, at any moment, black could also change in e4 if it gets dangerous. And Angie's making a move. It's queen, queen d4. d4. <laughs> 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 yes. Go, Lucy, go. Great. Mm -hmm. That's what we thought exactly. She agrees. Mm -hmm. Good to know. Okay, so check mm -hmm. the other game from Dinara. Um, oh, yeah, quite a lot happened here also. Yes. Ah, she took in c6. This was one of the, we said either knight f3 or knight takes c6. She took with the bishop. Yeah, we were discussing... Mm -hmm. A4, this is a bit strange move. Ah, okay, she's, af she's afraid of B5. I mean, just with the bishop on B3, the move looks somehow so, so weird. But yeah, <laughs> it does. But anyway, the bishop can drop back to C2, so then it's 
Yeah, that's what she does. Ah, B4, this is in. Ah, now it gets, now it gets very concrete. As we said, yes. it looks very calm. And, and now B4, because now black has to react, I think. Because if black does not play D5, I just saw it in our break on the monitor. Then the threat is to push back the black bishop and then attack here with E5. Mm -hmm. I mean, just to highlight, let's say black plays a really stupid move like rook D8. Then probably black is already losing because after B5, um, and bishop goes back and then E5. And if black plays the knight, then out of the sudden this bishop will be killing. Mm -hmm. Just to show some basic ideas. So I think this is exactly the moment when an experienced Sicilian player knows now we must uh, strike somehow and plays d5. Well, okay, but the question is how well does it work? I mean, it's not so. Uh -huh, or is it b5? The engine doesn't like it at all, and no. b5 looks very strong. Yeah, yeah, no, it's um, yeah, b5 is the. She also played b5, e takes b. This happened then again. Yeah, and then and you mean then to go e5 afterwards, or because there are many interesting options. Also, also e5 instantly is not so stupid, I think. But mm, no, I would play b5 first of all, and then take take, and then e5. Yeah, but then we have to retake with the c-pawn, no? Yes. Is it bad? It releases the pressure on d5, so this is the... Okay, we can look at it. Uh, but I think my first idea would to play e5, at least if bishop b4 doesn't work, and I think it doesn't work, so mm -hmm. I think I would play e5, but... Okay, so bishop takes b4 doesn't work no after e5? No, this doesn't work. This is for sure, because... Um, after e takes f6, bishop c3, then queen d3, is see. Now uh, wait, wait. Maybe I'll find something. This will be difficult here. Because just the bishop is lost. Mm. Okay, I don't find anything. <laughs> 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 I really <laughs> tried hard. Okay, but... Um, and if black plays knight, e knight e4 also doesn't work, because knight e4, d e, and now b5. Ah, no, maybe it works, okay. Because the rook is still hanging here. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's just black is hanging on by the skin of her teeth, but maybe it's just because b5 doesn't really work. And after cb, now you have bishop d5 and black is very okay. Ah, okay, maybe this is the reason. Yeah. Okay, so you preferred yes. b5 instantly and also the engine likes it. And then the bishop it. has to move back. The only thing I did not like that I have to take was the c pawn now. Yeah. But then it's okay. Yeah, and then e5, of course, yeah, it looks very attractive for a while. Mm -hmm. Ah, and it cannot even go to d7 because I take on d5 probably. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, then it looks real. If, yeah, if the so bishop has to go to e8, then it looks very passive. Probably now e5. No? e5, not d7. And then we must give checkmate somehow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because then positionally black is very fine. I mean, um, so um, you need to attack very quickly, but maybe e5 is not the best move here. d5. But this is typically Sicilian, because positionally now black is really fine. This, oh, this was the reason why I did not like b5, because mm. I have to take with the c-pawn. And now, um, now you need really some concrete tactics for white, otherwise... So let's go for e5, mm -hmm. knight d7. Mm -hmm. no. And one idea was maybe f5 now. Yeah, that's what I thought about. Mm -hmm. yeah, and also the bishop on e8 in this case is quite good because without the bishop on e8, I think that even the sacrifice on h7 followed up by queen h5 and rook f3, e3 would be dangerous. But here the bishop is perfect to defend. Mm -hmm. Okay, but after f5, black would take it. I mean, as a French player, now I'm getting more optimistic. Mm -hmm. Ah, but the engine doesn't agree. Ah, maybe bishop b3 now. He think this one. Oh, so e6 is interesting now. Now, probably this is the way to go for white. 
Anyway, in the game, she played something else. It was ATX B and yes, B5, ATX. We don't want to switch to the game. And then she played, yes, EDX mm -hmm. D5. Mm -hmm. yeah, looks much stronger mm -hmm. than immediately ZDX B5. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I'm not sure why, but... Um, no, because she uh, has a pawn now on d5, and this can get weak. Mm. And now I only take on b5. Yeah, but I lose the e5 option. Yeah, not sure. So you want to go c takes b5 now? Yes. Okay. Bishop e8. I don't know, I don't... Structure uh, concerning the structure, I don't like it too much. I mean, it's okay if in the moment the bishop is very passive, but if black gets out uh, with your pieces, then mm, I don't know. Or maybe bishop e3, d4, and Yeah, this, this bishop on e8 is so stupid. Because mm -hmm. otherwise, black would have a, quite a good position. But here, this is. Okay, just. But does have black a choice? Um. <coughs> Do you in this position? No. Maybe she thinks about bishop d7. No, no, she already played bishop e8. Okay. Yeah, this is normal. No, it's interesting. It's. Probably bishop e3, or do you see another idea? I like your idea with bishop e3, bishop d4. And so they're against the bishop c5 idea. Mm -hmm. Well, black can play bishop c5. I mean, yeah. probably must, must even play bishop c5, and then it's a strange position. Okay, let's take a look. I mean, bishop e3 looks like the normal move. I mean, there are ideas like queen d3, for example, and also some hinting some ideas here, but mm, okay, let's see bishop e3, and I guess black should play bishop c5, because allowing bishop d4, that's also not so clear, but okay. Unusual position. As I said, I think, but black is suffering so much from her bishop on e8. Mm -hmm. If this bishop would be in a good place, then totally different story. Still, well, white is, feels like white is better, but it's not totally clear. I was just thinking about a funny idea, but it, but it doesn't work. Um, so probably uh, now black probably taken c5 or what happens here very strange position both sides have connected past pawns and <laughs> <laughs> very sharp mm, but the white pieces are a bit more active yeah, yeah absolutely maybe queen f3 yeah maybe white can use this immediately I like queen of three somehow to pin the deep one. Mm -hmm. I'm putting pressure here. Yeah. I prefer white. No, yeah, well, definitely I think white is better here. It's an unusual position. And I'm threatening with rook d1. And then the black position would, be, would collapse. So there's definitely some pressure. So for Dinara, then probably this means what does the uh, yeah, engine give some advantage for white? Uh, so what was her mistake? Um, I didn't like too much b6 in this position. This looks very slow. Uh, she wanted to play bishop b7. Does d5 work somewhere? No, probably I would play knight, knight if possible. If white doesn't have a trick with knight d5, which is possible. 
I would prefer 97 somehow. I don't know whether some tricks with 95, but. Bishop c2. And put the bishop to f6 then. I think if I get mm -hmm. this position, then it's not so bad then. Mm -hmm. So regrouping mm -hmm. your pieces. That's a good idea with the bishop Well, f6. here what she played, b6 is a bit slow. I think she underestimated uh, b4. Yeah, queen b7. Mm. Yeah, maybe bishop b7 should be played. Mm. And now always the question whether white can play e5 and um, get a mating attack. But for my feeling, this is quite a normal Sicilian position here for black. I would think that black is okay here. Mm -hmm. As I said, uh, just the question being whether with e5 and some problems in h7, but mm. I think probably black is quite okay here. Next move will be rook c8. And well, the engine gives slight white advantage, but I don't really sure it's true. I think queen b7 um, is a typical battery here, which in many cases is good. But I think that b4 was really strong at there. Mm. Because now, as we saw, she will get these problems with the bishop to put this bishop to a good square. And d5, of course, was quite a radical... Um, <laughs> A radical reply here. I mean, maybe, um, yeah, okay, mm -hmm. but the, as but we said, said, the problem was b5 and e5. But maybe, mm, yeah, but now this is the point. She loses somehow coordination. I just give it one try to play rook c8 here, which is a bit less compromising, but. Oh, what if she plays queen c7 again? Back. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. It's. It looks a bit stupid, no, no. but therefore you mm -hmm. have some space for your bishop on b7. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Looks more solid for me. Yeah, this is a um, very interesting idea. Just saying, okay, that b4 in this case is just weakening her opponent c4. Yeah. And now white has to show something. Mm -hmm. And now my mm -hmm. bishop doesn't have to go to e8. Well, I guess white will take the time now to regroup, regroup with the bishop to b2 and and then maybe rook c1, but yeah, this looks very reasonable. On some lines, white can play a5 here, but that's right, I like this much better than the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a good idea, what does there? Yeah, yeah, it's only a slight advantage for white here, while mm. in the game, I think this was d5. As I said, it's a typical Sicilian counter reaction, but in, in many cases, very good. But here, um, I think the problem is that the bishop comes to such a passive square. I should took first here, so this is the idea to force the black bishop afterwards to go to, um, because now the, and the bishop cannot go to d7, because this bishop would be hanging. Mm -hmm. And you uh, went to oh, she b2. Went b2. Yeah, okay, this is also interesting. Yeah, trying also, also to do some nice. king's attack. Mm -hmm. Although I also like bishop e3, but, but bishop mm -hmm. e2 also looks good. Yeah. Yeah, because it's with this stupid this bishop on e8 would drive me crazy as uh, with black wings. <laughs> you don't, don't get it back into the game. Mm -hmm. And right now is next move, maybe queen d3. Or uh, she made a move, we'll see it right now. And it's bishop c5, yeah, that's what I was mm -hmm. expecting. Now the idea is bishop d7, probably. Oh, but maybe queen f3 now. Or queen d3? Yeah, 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 I was not sure. Queen d3 or queen f3. Mm. But the idea of queen f3 is if black now goes bishop d7 to bring out the bishop to play the cruel move f5 to again kill mm -hmm. the poor bishop. <laughs> 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 but maybe it's not so clear. So I don't know, somehow I don't like the bishop on b2 so much. I uh, would have preferred it on e3. Because um, now black gets a bit of activity. And mm -hmm. mm. I think here black would recover a bit.
Okay, she plays move natural move, rook d1. Yeah, yeah, she's attacking the depot now. Yeah, now probably I guess some tactics with knight takes d5 for hanging in the air and some double bishop sacrifice. Oh, some romantic, I romantic would love to see this. Romantic stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, so nice. But in fact, it's a big question now whether bishop d7 works or not. Oh, right, maybe we can take in d5. And yeah, please. Please let's check this okay, line. It's <laughs> I think it's, it's, it's enough for draw. This is, this is pretty sure. <laughs> I love double sacrifice of the bishops. <laughs> My most favorite tactics. <laughs> but maybe it's only draw. But no, probably the idea being. Mm -hmm. Oops. Yeah. And also the big question is why it does have more than a draw. G5? Mm, yeah. And King H8. Uh, now it's not easy to proceed with the rooks. Yeah, yeah, because the bishop, now it's a good bishop because it controls the square and mm -hmm. h3. Yeah, I need to play f5. Maybe. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if I have enough time well for that. The engine thinks it's only perpetual. Yeah, <laughs> yeah this was no. maybe a bit too, too yeah, brutal. Yeah, it would have been too nice. Mm -hmm. But if not, is the question because now black threatens bishop, uh, because probably queen d3 is the idea, I think. Mm hmm. The engine doesn't like it. Okay, ah. what about taking on d5? Mm -hmm. Then knight takes and then queen d3. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, or queen f3. Ah, you want immediately to take back the pawn. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah that is also what I just thought, something like this. Mm -hmm. And queen d3. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But maybe this pawn is not so, because now you have to take with the queen. Black is now hmm. probably to play g6. Yeah, okay. Mm. Maybe queen f3 is better. Yeah, because here I think this the ending maybe, maybe is not quite as winning a pawn, but. Okay, I, I also have another idea. So, yeah, here, maybe queen h5. Mm -hmm. It must be some kind of queen move. I'm not sure which one is the best. I would be afraid of f5, by the way. Or f5 now? Okay. Well, bishop b3. Bishop b3. Bishop, bishop b6. Rookie one, no, maybe something better. Okay, but now we give a full piece, I think. Um, this is hard to believe, is it? Uh, isn't it? The engine likes it. Mm. <laughs> oh yeah, it's uh, interesting, give slight right advantage, so probably rookie one. Yes, rookie one. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is quite amazing if this works. <laughs> I think this wasn't the move. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, well. there's something better mm -hmm. instead of yeah. queen h5. Yeah, also this, this, I, this I don't believe. Uh, queen f3, I think, was normal move. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because this keeps this keeps all yes. options. Because in bishop e6, now again, we have f5. Mm -hmm. and, and for sure, we'll and also we have the option not to take, um, take back with the bishop. This would be great. Now, next move, bishop e4 or even bishop b3. Yeah, yeah, this looks very good. This looks killing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess this is the idea. And if black cannot play bishop d7, then it's a bit sad story. Probably has to play rook d8 then. Oh. Well, this shows that maybe bishop b2 was a good decision by Alexandra. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, maybe it's time to switch to some other games. Yeah, we yeah. spent a long time <laughs> now with the game. And there are many other ah. interesting games. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. a lot here. happened. They are playing very quickly. Um, Looking like a big advantage for Elizabeth. Hopefully. After Queen D4, I don't want to sound anti-Chinese, but <laughs> in this case, of course, we root for Elizabeth this time after her unlucky loss yesterday. King of A8 is uh, all the moves that we said. Yes. And now, now it's changing, yes. And then we said the ending with the bishops. This should be um, 
Yeah, we said this ending should be somewhat better for black for sure. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly what we thought because now it should be one and the pawns will mm -hmm. become very weak. And exactly this happened and yeah, very difficult position mm -hmm. for Shongi. Wow. Ah, the, the bishop is it. But if we get the A pawn, then this pawn will be extremely strong. Why didn't she play bishop b6? Um, because of knight f4 or mm, what? Probably, although, okay. although this pawn can be extremely strong, but uh, I mean, if black gets the A pawn here. Probably she's not uh, not afraid to lose the C pawn if she gets the A pawn. I guess this is the the explanation. If white now takes in C seven and black takes in E to A two, then mm -hmm. and if white tries to save the A pawn, then maybe there's time to play C six or even C five. Then I would go for C six. White can take in c6, but then we'll just take back then. Oh, it's a nice, domi nice domination here with the bishop. And knight f4, probably black can just take if she wants. Can play a5 to fix the pawn. Oh, this was a strange decision by, um, by Tan to, uh, to go for this ending. Or maybe she could not avoid it, but. Mm. Um, for me, it was strange to go for this knight e4. Yeah, this, yeah, but bishop e4 didn't work for tactical reasons. So yeah, but he, she didn't have to take on f5. So in first case, like yeah. this whole variation started okay. one move before. Yeah. Yeah, f5 after f5. Yes. Yeah, to take in a five was exactly. a bit strange, um, a bit cooperative. Because after taking, she has to go for it, but I don't like it. <laughs> Maybe rook e1 in this position. And then f4? It's a question how dangerous f4 is in fact. Well, white will be a bit passive, but uh, hard to say. Mm. But anyway, the um, now we think that Elizabeth has a clear advantage in the endgame. Mm -hmm. And also the engine seems to agree. Oh yeah, the engine gives totally winning position. But we saw yesterday that <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> some positions that were given as totally winning. Um, yeah. It's clear that if white takes on c7 and black takes on a2, that this pawn here with the two bishops would be extremely strong. Mm -hmm. And basically white has nearly no counterplay, at least no serious counterplay. I mean, she can also try to attack the structure here. But still, I think this is um, very good for black. Ah, but still, with the knight, there are always some tricks. But Okay, let's see the other game so mm -hmm. that we don't miss anything. Ah. Yeah, we already discussed this a long yeah, time. Yeah, she played rook d8. Mm -hmm. That's what we saw. This only because bishop d7 we said is losing after mm -hmm. knight takes d5. But I saw that we have already a result. Ah, Marie okay. and Humpy true. That's what I'm reading. So let's go to this game. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, uh, it seems we missed a lot. So <laughs> maybe <laughs> we go back <laughs> where we ended the last time. Um. Yeah, she played the move that we expected. A4. It mm -hmm. happened. A6. Now she took the rook. The rook took. Ah, she simply played. Uh, but this is also yeah, it's we exactly had, no? what mm -hmm. we discussed. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Ah, genau. And now not she did not take on c3, mm -hmm. because then white wants to take in a6. So she yes. played in a more safe way with rook a8. It's the idea not to give this pawn. Mm -hmm. Interesting move, bishop mm -hmm. f5. Very yeah. cool. Yeah, that's cool. Okay, rook e8. Yeah, because I think this yeah. is, is very good for white, because now out of the sudden the knight is beautiful here, and mm -hmm. b5 and h6 is weakened. 
So she went back because now the A6 is no more attacked. So she can again uh, <coughs> she can regroup the rook, increasing the pressure. Okay, ah no, take, ah, so take, that's take, how take. it happens. Okay, okay, yeah. Okay, she decided to play it safe because she gives here. She gave a pawn. This can be dangerous if you can keep the um, the rooks on. But here, black gets enough counterplay. Rook a2. Uh, now this. Ah, okay. <laughs> okay, she plays it very safe. Uh, what about King G7? Was this also possible to keep on playing? I no, mean, it's a pawn. Oh yeah, okay, <laughs> <laughs> same idea, yeah. yeah. And bishop e4 check, and, <laughs> <laughs> and we will come to the same. You're really <laughs> forcing it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so like we expected, Scottish opening and yeah, it maybe ended just in a draw. Maybe just to explain why it's total draw, I mean, because um, okay, yeah, still yeah. white is a pawn up. But in principle, um, black will put the pawn to a5, and then just uh, have a fortress here with the black king going to, uh, just maybe just to show it. Say white plays king f1, play a5, king e2, king f8, and um, well king d3, king g7. And um, now you can take also the pawn on f2. Yeah, well okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. So white. Weak uh, now it is. <laughs> white should play just. Um, mm -hmm. But it doesn't matter at all because the white king, the bishop alone will defend the queen side because the bishop just um, falls back and white can never make any progress here. And of course the black king. From G7 will defend everything on the king side, and so this is total draw. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. I think this was well played, correct game. Maybe not. This was not too exciting, but it was correct game, as far as we can say. I would say a typical Scottish. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as we said, draw. this this line has a very uh, very high drawing margin, considered to be very solid for white. And so it seems yeah. that maybe Maria was so, um, for her was okay today the draw. So the first result for today is a draw. Let's see what the other games show. We left in some somewhere here. Mm -hmm. Queen g3 happened as we expected. Also bishop d8. She plays king h1. It's kind of prophylactic move. Uh, we, ex we expected to a doubling of the rooks, if I remember right. Mm -hmm. Rook c5. Mm -hmm. Yes, also doubling. And now she played our move knight c3. Giving the pawn on c4, but attacking here then. But here's the question why the king is better on h1 than on g1, but okay. Okay, let's continue with the moves. Increasing the pressure. Mm -hmm. And f4, yes? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this was so. I said I was not really convinced of this. Uh, she simply takes in c4. And that um, many lines rooked and exchange sacrifice might be dangerous. Mm -hmm. Queen takes and bishop c7. Mm. This doesn't look good for white at all. I think so. No. Yeah, because now after opening up the position, this pawn will be terribly weak if the, if the black bishop is coming here. Mm -hmm. Uh, big problems. Yeah, this is the reason why she plays rook d5, just to prevent. Um, mm -hmm. But now, yeah, I have six logical move, just preparing bishop e5. This is the bishop on e5 will be a powerhouse, basically like in the King's Indian game of Elizabeth. Yes. And clearly dominating this knight as here. Yeah, rook b5 now. But somehow this looks more like playing for tricks than. Um, I think she wants to attack the b3 pawn. Mm -hmm. What should black do now? I don't know, somehow it looks totally wrong for white, but... Um, but okay, but it asks some concrete questions. Okay, rook... Maybe simply rook takes b5. What about this idea to okay simply um yeah yes I know <laughs> <laughs> what do you want no, to I do I thought I have an absolute winning line but uh, of course total failure because I wanted to play this queen takes b five 
And then no something queen, with the queen? No, queen e5. Okay, no, no checkmate on e8. But unfortunately, I lose the rook with... No, it is not... Okay, I thought you were go checkmate <laughs> no, on no. e8. <laughs> the rook is hanging with check, this is the... <laughs> Otherwise, it would be very good. But maybe still it's okay, because... Let's say now I play rook d4. But the pawn is protected, and... And I'm intending queen to e5. Uh, it's hanging with check. Um, mm. Okay, but this is, is not so clear. I think probably black is better. Yeah, gives black advantage, but it's it's a bit shaky. Everything. This pawn hangs with check. This is such a sad story. But there must be something better. I think black has really some advantage here. Maybe I should keep the rooks, because the white rook on b3 also looks a bit stupid. Mm -hmm. I just don't see yet the follow-up, but... Well, nobody says that we have... Um, why not to play just um, queen e5 in this position? Ah, uh, <laughs> <that's> <laughs> <laughs> I'm just in a, I want I'm so fascinated by this queen e5 move. <laughs> okay, so let's play. What does white do after g6? Probably take and queen b5 again. Um, mm -hmm. um, that's this always an unpleasant feeling. Uh, the feeling that is a very good move here for black, but. I mean, what what we proposed, changing on b5 and rook d4, I mean, it's okay for black, it's slightly better, but, but somehow I can stop the feeling there must be something even better. Mm. Maybe I'm too materialistic. I don't want to give the B3 pawn because it's such a um, such a powerhouse. But I was thinking about something like Rook D8, giving the pawn and Rook B3, and now um, in way to D2. And positionally, of course, Black has a very good position, but we lost our beautiful. Mm. No, sorry. No, no. <laughs> I don't agree. <laughs> Yeah, rook b5 is interesting idea. Right it's the only disturbing because if black succeeds to put something to e5 without problems. Well, maybe it was just a change in what you had before. Change in b5 and play rook d4 then. Mm -hmm. Sacrifice this pawn with rook d8. I think it's possible, but it's very sad. No, please don't do this. Okay. Well, the computer likes it. I mean, the black is better, but probably it's the best solution. Maybe the black position is not so strong as it seems. It's this. Oh, the computer gives clear advantage for black. Mm. Okay, so this is the right solution. This is quite typical that I don't believe in my own ideas. It's <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's see mm -hmm. the other games so that we don't miss anything. Ah, this we had. But on the other direction. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, what happened here? <laughs> I think here we missed a lot. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's why. Oh, and something happened. The game has finished. Okay, so let's but what's the result? Let's go to the last position. Maybe draw, because it doesn't yeah. look like anybody resigns him. No, and I think it's draw. If I see correctly, then the kings mm -hmm. are yes, in the opposite. Yes, I think so. Yeah. Okay, interesting. Mm -hmm. Why would you go for a draw here? 
So maybe go back and mm -hmm. yeah, see what happened in the game anyway. So knight e4 and mm -hmm. the d5 move, yeah. as we expected, of course. Yeah, also in this game, this typical um, Sicilian break, but here it looks better than in the other game. Yeah, black sacked the pawn for the moment. But it's activi activating um, her pieces. Mm -hmm. And also now hitting the, <coughs> the pawn. So knight b6, this is the square the white knight loves. And at first sight, one might think that white is better here. Maybe it's but also, also bishop e5. The white square bishop also has very beautiful squares. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, this typical scenario, black has freed and sacrificed the pawn, but um, now it has some very active pieces. The rook on a2 is a bit funny. And but he yeah, comes now into the game. Mm -hmm. And rook c7, yeah. Mm -hmm. Queen before and take, and now they decided to make a draw. Probably black has to decide whether to take in a5 or b3. Still, I must say, I would think that maybe white is a little better because still, um, yeah. you also had this with queen, uh, queen c7. I'm really wondering why they decided mm -hmm. to make a draw here. What because the there's still a lot to play. And the engine's a slight advantage for white, but this doesn't mean much, of course. What would you play with black? You're taking a pawn. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I think rather taking the a5 pawn. But there's also an idea of queen c7. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I like white's position a bit more. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering why she's not continuing to play. She also has 10 minutes more. Okay, but losing f7 maybe is also not the end of the world, but because g7 is protected. But mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah, it's a bit pity because it's an interesting position for sure. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting what black is playing now. Was it even the best choice to take on e5? Maybe it's better to take the b3. Yeah, pawn. I would take the b3. Okay, why? I don't know. <laughs> 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 okay, queen c7. I mean, black can defend with queen b1 check and queen g6, but it's a bit passive, and then white. White keeps the deep on. Yeah, it's still a very interesting mm -hmm. game. Well, my feeling also would be that black has some, some compensation for the pawn, but still. Yeah, it's not so easy. Black has I to show. I think with white pieces I would rather play on. Mm -hmm. uh, also with 10 minutes more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a bit str surprising. But somewhat seems that today the, the Musichuk sisters were not in such fighting mood. <laughs> seems so, I don't know. It would be interesting to find out why she made a draw here. Yeah, both made draw with white. Okay, with black I think I would accept the draw. But yeah, of course, with mm -hmm. black. <laughs> yes. Ah, this was the last one here. So what did they decide to play? Rook d4. Ah, she played rook d4 instantly. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is... <coughs> I was not sure on which side we want to have the queen, so maybe this is better. Yeah, because now if white tries the same, then we can immediately put the bishop on on e5 then. White now plays. Maybe we can play bishop e5 now. And the e5 pawn? No, maybe even even here, finally, this queen e5 is not so stupid. My favorite move, yeah. even, even though we lose the... Because now the white king is very weak. The king has to go somewhere. And after g3, rook d2. And now we have the strong threat, rook takes h2 check. And this is... And maybe h4, h5, h4. Mm -hmm. I think this can be very dangerous for white. 
Interesting idea. Rook G1 and then H5, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not so easy. The engine is not so convinced. Oops, a slight advantage for white, but I mean, black must not give the pawn. I wouldn't give the pawn, but I like your idea. Oh, it's thank you. It was very interesting. <laughs> Anyway, I think rook d4 is the right, basically the right idea, mm -hmm. as we had before. We just wanted the first to change, but yeah. maybe she thinks that the queen on h5 is um, is worse. Okay. Okay, still we think black is better anyway. Yeah, so they exchanged rooks mm -hmm. now, but let's go to the other games. This was already draw, and yeah, let's see this game. So what happened in this end game? Well, it's another um, ending with uh, bishops of different color. Mm -hmm. Looks very drawish. Yeah, let's go back. Ah, I remember this this the game when I said that black is under strong pressure, so um mm -hmm. oh, she played knight d five. Rook d one was maybe not the correct move here. I liked somehow the move a four in this position. Yes. Because I think this um A five would be quite a concession, but Okay. Hard to say. This is difficult to analyze in this stage. Rook d1 also looks normal, must be admitted. Mm -hmm. Bishop d7. Ah, oh, she's ready just to give back a pawn. This is the idea. And probably this is quite good defensive idea. And here we see a difference. Let's say if now if a4, a5 is played, I think now mm, hard to say. For example, black would not have to square b5 for the bishop if the white pawn is an a4. Mm -hmm. Okay, white wins a pawn, but black um, activates and... Mm. That was a very mm. good defensive yeah. idea. Yeah, that was nice. Yeah, I think here with the two bishops, black is good counterplay. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah very good defense by Al Alina. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think. Okay. Yeah, this should be true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think it's, <laughs> tot it's total draw here. <laughs> it's the bishops of different color. Yeah. What does the engine see? So when g6 and yeah. Yeah, draw. Oh, very interesting. Mm -hmm. So when you're under pressure, it's sometimes a really mm -hmm. good idea to sacrifice a pawn just to get activity. Yeah, this was 95, was a very good defensive idea. Mm -hmm. We had queen f3 here, so I think that's what we expected. Mm -hmm. Queen a8. Queen a8. a8. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, what is the bishop mm -hmm. on the 8 yeah, yeah. can't move? Rook f8 can't move? No, queen a8, I think, is maybe the only move to survive. Mm -hmm. And also now it's possible to play d4. Mm -hmm, exactly. The queen g3 also looks nice, putting pressure here on. on. But. The d4 pawn. It seems as if black is losing the pawn now, no? Yes. But what else? There was nothing to do. Oh, probably black has to give a pawn now, I don't know, maybe not, not c3 or. Oh no, it's also it's very bad. Because the I thought that maybe knight c3 to change queens. What's the problem being? White does not change in e8, but uh, simply takes here. Mm. And now black cannot change queens because in the end the, mm -hmm. and the rook will be hanging. Yeah. So this means that after d takes c3, then keeping the queens on is terrible for black here with the. Oof. So finally f6 <laughs> at least. Yeah. Well it seems black is just losing a pawn with a bad on d4 with a <coughs> with a bad position as it as it seems to me. Mm -hmm. And still the problem is this problem of this bishop on e8 then. Yeah. That is queen b7 and then b4, b5 then was um Yes, queen b7 mm -hmm. was not the best idea unfortunately. And if queen b7 then, then your idea back. then to go back to c7 because yeah. the bishop needs 
Here I think this was the point that um, Dinara lost the coordination when she had to go back with the bishop to e8. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's go to Elizabeth's game mm -hmm. and see if she already has oh, yeah. a very, very winning position or still has to fight. So what happened here? Oh, she took him. Took, mm -hmm. yes. And bishop d3. Yeah, yeah. that's the only counter chance. Mm -hmm. Yes, so freezing the bishop on e2. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like this, just uh, pushing the pawn. Mm -hmm. One. Yeah, very nice. Yeah. Look at this. How this, um, how these bishops are um, shielding the white, the white king from coming closer. Beautiful. Very nice. Ah, perfect. <laughs> I love it. This is the best, best setup for the bishops. <laughs> and now you are happy. Mm -hmm. Full power of bishop here. And as I mentioned, the old Austrian saying that Veronica um, did not know. <laughs> <laughs> this is a volten. This board is a cloud <laughs> flying away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably the only right chance is someone taking g6 and then sacrifice the knight for the, ah, yeah, for the okay, pawn I see. and maybe collect all the pawns here. But it's not so easy because I can take on c4. Yeah, no? exactly. This is the problem. So first king d2. But then you can protect, maybe. <sighs> hmm. I don't see how white has any chances to m somehow defend this position. Yeah, Maybe it looks completely lost, but the engine mm -hmm. says mm, there might be some ideas. Well, not exactly. Minus two. Yeah, mm. minus two, but still. And minus two is, is lost. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> we had some positions <laughs> yeah, yeah. where <laughs> it <right>. wasn't <laughs> lost. <laughs> My impression is it's quite a weak analyze engine here. Yes. Sorry, Stockfish 11. Okay, so, so good news for yeah. all the German fans here. Well, we think that Elisabeth has big advantage, probably a winning position. Yes. Because, um. as, as we said, but this queen d4 is ending, and, and then, especially mm -hmm. after changing rooks, this was our judgment. And we also said that the problem would be um, the white a pawn. So basically everything, in this case, to a bit to clap on our shoulders. <laughs> 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 it happened as we expected. But well, I must say I didn't expect it so bad for white, but it's, um, it's even worse than we thought. Mm. But Elizabeth played it very well, I think. Yeah. She played a very bold opening, interesting pawn sacrifice. And then she continued very well. And this shows her a lot of mental strength after this incredible blunder yesterday. Yes. This is really impressive. But as I told you, uh, Already at the breakfast, I saw that she is happy and in mm -hmm. good mood and chatting with her other friends here. So I was sure she will make a great game. Oh, what happened here? This looks now completely lost. Yeah, with this weak square in E6. Yeah, but Dinara is already in time pressure. She played um, she played F5 and here bishop G6. Mm. I have the feeling that on E6 something terrible will happen. Because if the knight lands on e6, then also um, there will be a very strong um, threat against g7. So, mm -hmm. okay, she pins her hopes on her. Um, yes, she some hopes to do something on f2. Yeah, okay, but if even if white plays in the most primitive way, I mean, let's see, check or does she want to play bishop f7 or? Well, why can't we play knight e6? No, we can, we can, we can. It looks winning. Yes. Is probably the most. I wanted to push the black king to a, uh, h8 because then it's even worse than g7. Okay. Maybe black would play bishop f7. Yeah, bishop f7. And if black takes, then probably simply take back with the bishop. And mm -hmm. But I think she played knight c6. Yeah. Okay. Okay, also looks good. Yeah, very strong. Yeah, of course, this knight post because now this is. Well, wa we wanted to go here for the kill on the king's side, but um, she wants just to um, to kill the black queen. Mm -hmm. Keep it out of the game. Yeah, very strong. It looks like she will have three out of three points. Mm -hmm. So I might be right with my thought that she will win this tournament. I mm -hmm. don't know. It's just my feeling. Before yeah, I arrived here, I already thought that she might be the winner of this tournament. So probably black has to take and then bishop probably takes. 
Still, I don't know. I like this night e6 better. Yeah, the night e6 is mm -hmm. just decided. That it's yeah, over. I think so. Strange. Let's let's look whether it was true. Okay. Yeah. Um. Also, the engine thinks so. Yeah, the engine gives totally winning position. Mm -hmm. Because now the bishop will come back to b3. Mm. Maybe she was afraid of some stuff with knight d2, but. Knight d2, just exchange queens, in worst case. Yeah, then also this the bishop on c5 will be hanging afterwards, mm. and then I think this is totally over. Yeah, this knight c6 was not so convincing to us. But still, white does have. Um, does have big advantage, of course. Mm -hmm. It's interesting that she's thinking, does she intend to um, sacrifice the exchange? Probably it's also strong, but... Hmm. Take with the queen and then... Yeah. Interesting. And we're now also in the time trouble. Mm -hmm. Only three minutes left. Focus the nuke. Uh, well, still, I think white has big advantage, but the engine, yeah, I think. Yeah, also. Not as much advantage as after knight e6, but still. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. still, I think that Kostinuk will win, of course. Okay, quickly check mm. the other games because now it's time, time trouble. Pressure. and Very interesting period. Okay, this looks very good. Oh, knight d4 happened. Ah, this defense I did not see. Um. Um, by the way, Kostenyuk decided to take with the queen, so go for this mm. sacrifice. Okay, yeah, yes, of course. Yes. Mm. I'm used always to do what ladies tell me. <laughs> 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 okay, so the question being what happens after knight f2 check. Yeah. But obviously it loses. Very so. bad move, yeah, take. Mm -hmm. Take. Well, it's no surprise that it loses, but... Um, but how? Well, bishop b3 check and queen d7, something like this. And I know bishop b3 does the... Um oh, it is bishop b3? No, it's not. I was also thinking about... Oh, it, it is, I think. Mm. And then maybe knight e7 check, king mm. h8, and bishop takes g7. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Didn't calculate everything right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this looks very. Yeah, I think this is mating. But this is killing, yeah? Yeah, it's mate. Uh, just to show the variation that uh, Veronica yes. meant. Bishop b3 check, and if bishop f7 doesn't work, then it's for sure it's a good idea. No, check. And the line, b a nice line, ah, uh, here. The nice line being um, bishop takes g7 check, queen a1 check. Queen a1, yes. King h6, and this is mating. As if the king goes here, it's mate here, and if the bishop, bishop g6, six and then knight f5. Knight takes king h5, mm -hmm. queen g5. Mm -hmm. Ah, so beautiful. Ah, beautiful. I love <laughs> these tactics. <laughs> 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 okay, so what happened? Well, she's not playing it. Okay. Oh, I would love to see this. Well, anyway, after bishop b3 check, she could um, play king h8, but I think it's also it's terrible for black for sure. Mm. Okay, so let's see the other games before we miss something. So Elizabeth still looks very promising. Yeah, but this was knight d4 was an interesting defense of the... Um, mm -hmm. They are still playing, okay, but, this but we don't know why. No. Okay, okay, we really don't know why they are still playing. No, 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 white, okay. sorry, white, white does have one plan that is interesting. What's your plan? Uh, but I mean, anyway, it won't help, I mean, the plan... Uh, the the only interesting plan is here to put the king to g5 and play g4 because this will force black to change and then we can create the passer here. Okay, that's your idea. And the question is, but I think the bishop on c6 will protect the whole the whole queen side and then the king can go over here. Yeah, so probably it's still a draw. Mm -hmm. Okay, but thanks for this information because otherwise we might wonder. Yeah, this was and yeah, we already have this and yeah, this was... Just to show the last move. And this oh, okay. is also interesting for us. Mm -hmm. What happened here now? So 
we left when you sorted blackest yeah. would be four. Mm -hmm. ah, ah, this was this was the sacrifice. Mm -hmm. But here, um, yeah, rook d2. This was exactly the attacking idea. We also thought that, in principle, black should sacrifice a pawn on the queen side and then switch over to the attack. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the queen Ooh. goes back. Queen h5. Yeah, but probably it was difficult to protect. Um, I mean, rook b1 looks very passive, and. But why not queen b? Oh okay, then queen. Finally, queen e5. <laughs> uh, finally. Okay, <laughs> now, I, now I have the idea. Queen b5. Mm -hmm. So now you can try queen d6 again if you like. <laughs> or I play queen e5. Yeah. That's also... Well, the only question being whether white can survive this, but I don't believe. I don't think so. And rook b one, but rook white is a pawn up, but the position looks terrible. <laughs> uh, does it work? Take take b two. Well, he's just and in just in time yeah, to play. Yeah, just in time. Hmm. Okay. But probably black Immediate can just come with the king or do yes. something and. White or rook c2, then knight a4. Yeah, rook c2, now it's threatening to win with bishop c3 and b2. And mm -hmm. After knight and a4, white is... Also rook c4 and mm -hmm. taking e4 pawn, for example. Yeah, but then knight c3 comes back and then... But no, but I think just come with the king and... Okay. Mm -hmm. And probably this is even a pawn down, this is a huge advantage for black. But yeah. okay, but let's look what happened in the game. She gave the pawn in b2, which is a bit hard to understand because if you lose the pawn in b2, I think um, it's a strange decision. Yeah, but also this endgame we analyzed before, it's not so yeah, pleasant. Okay. But to lose the pawn here, it's, it's important that take here and queen e8 check is no mate because the queen can interfere on f8. Mm -hmm. Knight b5, now queen e4 with attack on g2. Oh, nice. Queen of seven check. <laughs> 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 nice trick. There always yeah. comes <laughs> something exciting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 96 <laughs> check, but of course black uh, doesn't comply, but plays... Um, <laughs> ah, this move was move 40. Um. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of fun. And, <laughs> and after seeing that this <laughs> trick doesn't work, then probably why this busted if... If she has to play rook g1 now, then... Yeah. Aha, uh -huh, but maybe still have to solve the problem of the bishop. Or maybe rook b1 then. After rook g1, I mm. play rook b1. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's what I mean. Probably rook b1. And yeah, this looks this is crushing. Oh, queen a7 <laughs> left. <laughs> but maybe not bishop takes... Ah, no, not bishop h2. <laughs> This is just wrong. Check. But all the check squares are protected now. So it is working because there is no check. Uh, we can take in b2 uh, or maybe knight c3, no, maybe bishop e5 just. Yeah. Okay, dominating the mm -hmm. knight. Yeah. I was threatened to take in b2, b1. And she played rook g1 in this position, but this time I think that there won't be any chances left for white no. but we will see yeah uh, this is the position we just had no and we said rook b1 yes mm -hmm. yeah no, okay yeah this is totally winning good or we can make a draw by rook takes g2 <laughs> <laughs> you can make one <laughs> <laughs> very mm, being a very peaceful person <laughs> yeah, this was okay draw. this is draw already but Elizabeth's ending was very this interesting. This is also draw and this here. will be draw. I see white has this only plan here to create an edge, mm -hmm. basically an edge pawn, but I think the black king comes over here and protects it. And then the white pl only plan can be to um, do something on the queen side, but I think uh, uh, if you put your bishop on c6, yeah, exactly, this is the plan. But yes. Mm 
but it won't be enough, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah, there we have this game, which looks really winning. It says plus 10, I think. Crazy. Okay, what's the score? Uh, white is a pawn up. It has the clearly better position. Oh yeah, f5, of course, because black cannot mm -hmm. take, because in the end there would some back row mate. Yeah. But in a moment also white cannot. Yeah, g4, no more. This looks very sad for black. This really looks like some last tricks, basically. Oof. And <laughs> Stockfish has plus nine points. <laughs> so. Well yeah. At least, at least white can change white queens. White can exchange if he wants. queens and mm -hmm. then just play rook e1. I mm -hmm. mean. Pff. Yeah, and winning also the pawn. On why not? Yes, can even just do this because there's a knight fork. Then I mean, you can even play, um, I think, check and take. Take rook e1, bishop f7, and now you yeah, can. Yeah, doesn't work because of the fork on e7. No, this is the trap, this rook e4 it would be the trap because here rook takes c6 is possible. And this would be bad news for white. <laughs> <laughs> this, is <the> only <laughs> this is the only trap. Okay, so keep on playing. <laughs> okay, they decided to exchange queens. I think we can remain with this game here, like until they have the 40th move. But of course, if you want, you can first check and then. Being two pawns up, but I think white can play much better. Yes. This is, mm, <laughs> this is just a fun variation. Oh, is this the game? Or? Yes, ah. it's the game. Oh. I just think there must be a better solution than the line that we just had. Then. Yes. Maybe change in G5. Or, mm. Okay, they exchange queens. I mean, as, as you said, uh, the line is um, good enough that you just had, but there clearly should be something better. Just putting the rook on somewhere. No, rook e1. I like, and she also played rook e1. Mm -hmm. Why no, not? okay, it's good enough. And as we just said, it's the last it's the last trap that White cannot take in e4. But I mean, there were worse blunders in this tournament already, so... <laughs> 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 Still some hope for Dinara. <laughs> but as we said, at least White can play knight e7 check and then... Yeah. Or maybe just play king g1 in this moment. Okay, but she played bishop e8. Ah, okay. Ah, okay, because the rook ending of the rook... Um, takes e4 and bishop c6 is not so clear, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I think white will Just never allow his, but probably check and rook e4. Yeah, and that's what happened in the game. Yeah, because, but here the bishop is even worse on f7 than on, uh, on e8 than f7, I think, so it's relatively. Yeah. Okay. Taking, I mean, it's two pawns up mm -hmm. and a strong yeah. knight. And better position. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this poor bishop, it's again, <laughs> it's back yeah. on his, on his worst place. again on e8. Yeah, oh, no. <laughs> poor bishop, I'm feeling some pity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she played simply this idea that um, we had just... Um, yeah, just take... Yeah, why not? Back will go rook d6 to activate somehow, but... But now it's already also move 40, so mm -hmm. I think Dinara's chances are going <laughs> close to zero. Sorry, so let's look what um, Elizabeth is, what happened in, in her ending. Oh, she's a pawn up. Okay, can we move back mm -hmm. and see uh, what happened with the pawn? Yes, thanks. Bishop b2. Yeah, this was the only probably bishop d1 now. No, bishop a2, okay. a2. Yeah, of course, just um, never to take this pawn because it would be too s this would be too slow. Because here um, the white king is just in time here to stop the pawn and then mm -hmm. white would even lose his pawn. This would be, this would be very sad. Mm -hmm. So it was just a question to which square to put this bishop. 
Okay, no. Why didn't she play a3? Uh, maybe she was because the bishop is maybe trapped here. I don't know. Yeah, maybe maybe this was the idea of um King D three now. Or what? Yeah, exactly. I, yes. I guess it's King D three but but no, no, we can take and take. Mm -hmm, exactly. Take, take, and then a two. No, so it's okay. Yeah, I think it was. I probably can see three, but then bishop takes d five, and I know then g six is hanging. This would not be so clear. Maybe. The engine says it's completely won. Ah, okay. Why can't we play king f six now, yeah, protecting, no, we and can. then taking d five? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. There's nothing for white. Yeah, yeah. I think a3 was a quite clean solution, but bishop c4, but it's also it's also strong. Mm -hmm. She gives now the a pawn, but on the other hand, she gets two pawns now and gives uh, open open play for the bishops. Yeah. So one more pawn and still bishop pairs a lot mm -hmm. of space for the bishops. Ah, yeah. <laughs> This can take long, but I'm pretty sure mm -hmm. Elizabeth is enjoying this game. <laughs> I'm sure White will try something with King E3 and Knight F4 maybe, but but of course now the black the black B pawn will start running for this next one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think this must be winning position for Black. Yes. Yeah, very strong game by Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. As we said, very nice, nice opening, and then um, strong end game play. So this is impressive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, clearly winning position. Okay, so maybe we should just, just go for a break, or is there still something? Going yeah, on? just quickly check if something is happening. But I think mm -hmm. yeah, also here it looks like Alexandra okay. is winning. Yeah, this is totally and winning. And in this game. Yeah, we saw the idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's still draw, uh, totally draw. Mm -hmm. So what happened here now? G4, and then she just mm -hmm. moved bishop e2. Yeah, this is a very clean defense. Yes, just take. Yeah, okay. Yeah, this is totally I'm not sure what she is mm. planning right yeah. now, so this is draw. Oh, this is total draw. And here in this game, this it's was already, already draw. Okay. Ah, this is the short look. <laughs> H3 is. Because still we can in the moment not take mm -hmm. a G1 because. Um, Queen of 8. Yeah, but maybe we can just play H6. Or yes. To play I would go for primitive. H6. Or is it too primitive? No, why not? And she's playing h6, <laughs> why not? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because there's absolutely no perpetual for white. And mm. I think white can just resign. Yes. Yeah, this was also a nice, nice game by, uh, by Shu Jinnah. Yeah. yeah, very nice Vashnikov game. Mm -hmm. Was anyway, it was a black day with the King's Indian by Elizabeth and uh, Svashnikov here by True. by Shu. Okay, so I think we might go for a break. Yes, I think it's a good time. I think the results are clear in the moment for all games. Mm -hmm. We'll make a break and then afterwards we will come back maybe in 10 minutes or so. Mm -hmm. And see <laughs> the finish of the game. See the finish. <laughs> <laughs> okay, see you soon. See you.
in the press room with Helmut Flöger. Helmut is a grandmaster, a German grandmaster, very strong player, although for the last years you've been mainly inactive. You live here in Munich. Helmut, what are you doing today here in the tournament? What do you think of the interesting games this afternoon? Well, first of all, I have to correct you. Maybe I was a strong player. I'm not anymore. I really can tell you with my blitz games against a friend of mine, Hajo Hecht. Well, but that's the first. But of course, it's very interesting. It's my hometown here in Munich. And it's very nice to see such a strong tournament with the best women from all over the world. So it's really a nice occasion. And it's not only today. I will come uh, again and again and uh, of course I follow the games too and there are really very interesting games and it's a pleasure. Uh, some of them I know already, some of them I don't. So uh, personal, not acquaintance, but to see them personally is something different than only on the photo made by David Yada with his wonderful photos, very good photos, yeah. but to see them personally he said something else. So Helmut, uh, for all the German fans who are following this tournament, for those who are following the tournament on YouTube as well, you are a very important person here in Germany because you are the host of a very important show with uh, Grandmaster Vlastimil Ort, Chess of the Grandmasters. I remember this because back in the time I also uh, was following the show, although not on a daily basis. What uh, things do you remember and what do you think has been your um, the, the most important thing you've put forward with this show for, for progress of chess here in Germany? Well, uh, I think really chess and television, it started somehow, well, if, if you put, put it personally, with me, in the very first uh, uh, turn, not tournament match, was between Karpov and the Lukas on. One move a week, and so German grandmasters commented on it, and they made me maybe recommendations, what one could play, and, and just explained to the Lukas on uh, the situation. And uh, the Lukas on, the German Lukas on, uh, and it was voted, uh, the majority voted for a certain move, mm -hmm. and they really they held uh, Karpov, he, who was world champion then in 77, they held him to a draw. Wow. And so it started with chess and television, and many people say liked it, there were chess tournaments. We, we made it together with BBC for some years, and always traveling to Bristol in, in England, or maybe in Hamburg. And, and then later on, and there were many, many chess tournaments, and it was quite popular, up to one million lookers on for, for one, uh, yeah. That's a lot. That's a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, now, later on, it became less, but nevertheless, it was quite popular. And what you are referring to is uh, with Vlastimil Hort. Of course, we, we liked it together to do our comments and. Uh, uh, of course, Vlasimil Hort, one doesn't have to introduce him, he, he was one of the best players in the world, but he is a very uh, joyful and uh, joking person too, so we try to, to do our best to explain it for a large audience who don't understand so well chess, but nevertheless to make it uh, understandable for them. And I think we, we succeeded in it and it was quite popular. And so the last program was in 2005 and unfortunately since they took it off because saying uh, in internet you, one can't uh, uh, transmit uh, chess tournaments so well we don't need it anymore in, in TV. Okay. Tell me, um, you, are, uh, you have been a very strong player in your own right. You played the Chess Olympiads with Germany, spanning a reach of 20 years, which is quite impressive, more than nearly 20 years playing Olympiads. Do you still play maybe league games uh, today? Maybe do you play online? Do you still practice or you have left the, part, the competitive part totally aside? Yeah. No, I, I don't play uh, tournaments anymore, nor league games, nor uh, nothing. Nothing of it. I only, t uh, every second or third week, with, with Hajo Hecht, who is a friend of mine and a grandmaster colleague, and we played for more than 20 years together in the German team. Mm -hmm. 
And with him, I, we play blitz games. You see, we have lunch together, and afterwards uh, we play blitz. And it's just nice, you see, not to forget how the pawn moves and the knight and so. Getting uh, getting back to the tournament here, what would you say, having seen the tournament this afternoon, what would you say are the main di the main differences that you see of the players of today at the top level? with regard to the players of your generation when you were playing the top level uh, tournaments do you notice any differences in the demeanor of the players maybe or the attitude or the concentration what what are the most differences you see there well i i think in general i it's difficult to compare and uh, i i saw great tournaments for instance with Gabriel Dashvili and so on uh, but i think in general the level of course it Uh, it's better now uh, uh, in our days than it was 20 years ago, without any doubt. Even when there were big, uh, great players, two women players, Gabin Dashvili, and uh, I don't know whom. Yeah? But uh, of course, and it's very professional now. Mm -hmm. uh, in former times, uh, it, it was difficult to make a living with chess especially for women and now it, it is possible and uh, so it's, it's a complete and with all the preparations with the computers it's somehow it's different without any doubt okay thanks for coming and i hope you enjoy the afternoon and the rest of the tournament yeah thank you very much So welcome back to our analysis after the first hour. Some of the games are yeah, finished already, but at first let's take a brief look at the nice finish of the game between Abdul Malik um, against Shu. And because we left here and Black played, um, well, I think we left one move before. 
here in the moment, um, black has a huge advantage anyway, but just has to be careful not to take here because it would have back row mate. So that's the reason why black made some air. Um, now the rook cannot move because otherwise um, it's made on g2. Knight c3, now nice move. Queen retreats to e8. Also, and now the black king is absolutely safe. And um, still the rook cannot move because um, the mate on g2. So, desperate move, knight to d5. Bishop g1, king g1. So, of course, anywhere, anything is winning. But this is a nice finish here. Rook takes g2 because after king g2 and b2, Nothing can stop the pawn from becoming a new queen. And then, obviously, it's totally over. So this was a very nice game. Classical Sveshnikov game by um, the Chinese lady. Mm -hmm. Very beautiful tactics in the end. So here we had the draw. This was another um, thing. Yeah, this was a correct draw as far as we saw. Very solid opening and no surprise that it became a draw in the Scotch game. This was a game where we thought that Harika had some advantage, but um, um, Alina defended very well. Because the crucial moment was that she was ready in this moment of the rook d1, when it still seems that black is under strong pressure. She was ready just to give back the pawn in d5, which was a very good um, decision, we think. And then, basically, with these two beautiful, two beautiful bishops, she um, got very strong compensation for the pawn, mm -hmm. and this was clearly enough for a draw. And in the end, um, uh, the ensuing end game. Ah, well, they are still playing, but yeah, uh, they are still fighting, but, but we don't but know <laughs> why. <laughs> we don't know for what because <laughs> it's we believe it's total draw because uh, whenever the white king will attack the pawn in h5. Then the bishop goes to e2, and if the white king goes back to f6, then the bishop ah, the bishop goes back to c4. And here, obviously, the black king is defending the the queen side, so there's no way to make progress. Mm. Okay, here by now, so, um, this was also quite a strong game in our opinion by Alexandra Kostenyuk. Former world champion. Um, we left the round here. Yeah, we reached this ending that we discussed, and uh, exactly as Veronica said, rook e1 happened. First check, rook takes e4. Now white is just two clean pawns up. h6, white king is coming. g6, takes, takes. King f3, and now this rook ending with two pawns up is totally. Totally hopeless for black. Mm. White can first p first push the pawn and then advance the king. And, and in any moment also to, s for example, to switch here with yeah. rook c4, c6. And while this is basically absolutely winning. Mm. And so the very interesting game now left is between mm. Shongi and Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. But it looks very good for Elizabeth that she will win this position. Yeah, I think we left about in this position when um, um, when Tan Shangji found the interesting defensive idea to play the knight to d4, and now this was um, the question where to put the knight, uh, the bishop. We just discussed it would be uh, too early to. Um, take this knight, because then the white king comes in time to stop the pawn. So Elizabeth, of course, kept the bishop. And now this was an interesting moment, because we think also a simple move a3 would be good. But Elizabeth um, decided to um, trade the a pawn for the um, for two white uh, pawns in the center. Now reaching a position when black has the bishop parent one pawn up, so basically it's huge advantage, ob objectively, surely winning position, but of course, still some technique required. Bishop e6, king d2, bishop e5, also a good move. <coughs> <coughs>
Sorry, Gesundheit. it happens to me sometimes <coughs> when talking in a bit dry air. <laughs> so um, we were already missing it. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks for that. So very sorry. It's just some allergic reaction, and for all spectators, definitely uh, no um, danger of any virus at all. Only for poor Veronica. But she doesn't look too daunted. No, I'm already used to this. <laughs> yeah, this always happens after some time of talking in dry air. So, um, Bishop C2, this is the only counter chance basically um, hitting this weak pawn on G6, but of course, black is defending it. Uh, Bishop D3. Yeah, Bishop D3 is there, there here to stop because black now can start advancing the B pawn, which of course would be quite a simple and effective idea. So she plays Bishop D3 and also Bishop D7 is basically logically because now she wants to push the um, support the B pawn. Now F4 is a move um, that um, I would hate to play with white because now it's it's weakening here the squares and um, now even after um, after changing for example the white bishops and later the black king can invade to g4. I mean then really any kind of ending basically is lost. I think the only um, the only thing um, that black should not do is. Um, Change this bishop for the for the this bishop for the knight, mm -hmm. but um, then maybe it's draw. But even this is not clear. Ah, oh, maybe it's draw. Then. Ah, she wants to trap the trap the bishop. This is <laughs> a funny idea, but I don't think it works. Why can't we just take the knight now? Oh, of course we can. Is this easily won, or do we seriously need some techniques? Yeah, we can look at uh, I think it's possible. Especially after this move f4 then and um and now to play bishop f5 probably. Bishop e2. Covering yeah, g4. Now. Ah you want to play g4, yeah. Mm -hmm, okay. Yes. Trying to exchange as many pawns as possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe it's not so easy because white can try to put up here a blockade. Yes. Yeah, maybe bishop f5 is not such a great idea, but on the other hand, if we don't play it, then the black king is kind of pinned here. Mm -hmm. But if it's unnecessary, I would not, uh, well, I think it should be still be winning, but um, personally, I would not change in c3 if it's not necessary. I would rather keep my bishop. I mean, I'm not sure was the bishop a1 was such a great idea, but mm. I mean, maybe now bishop b2 and goes to a3. Yeah, why not bishop b2 before? Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, sorry. Mm. <laughs> I'm innocent. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I would not play the bishop <laughs> to a1. But I also don't really understand. Oh, maybe just bishop b2. And check with the knight. Okay, what can I do just to... Yeah, go back. And... Two. Because if my bishop comes out, this pawn also will be in danger if my bishop comes to f2 sometimes. Mm -hmm. That is the reason why I want to put my bishop to c5, for example. I think if I, see if I get this, the bishop on c5, I think, then... to d4, of course. King e3. Okay, but if I want, I just play Yeah, I, I guess it's it. also the wrong direction for our king. Hmm. What does the engine say? Mm, okay, ah, instead yeah. of king e3. Something else. No, the, the check with the knight was okay. But of course, it's not necessary also to to play um, bishop b2 instantly. But, mm -hmm. but personally, I, I would not change the knight. I mean, for the bishop. Yeah. Even though it might be winning, but. Hmm. 
Well, what I mean, Bishop B2 is a very would be a very practical decision. Or is she afraid of um, something with knight e4 check and then but I don't think this, this can work. And now again play the knight to hit the pawn in g6, but Bishop Bishop F eight uh, F five I mean. Can we exchange to a white colored bishops or not? Yeah, for sure in this position. The knight is Yeah, here of course. Especially if the bishop takes a five, bishop takes his three check would be quite a nice mm -hmm. <laughs> a nice pawn ending, but <laughs> Yeah, but I think it's it's absolutely winning. But of course, with black pieces, it's it's easy to say when you sit in the analyze room. But of course, with black pieces, and um, you definitely don't want to spoil anything. Mm -hmm. You have to be very cautious for some tricks with the knight. So it's. But in fact, this is the only game of some interest here. Mm. And if Elizabeth wins this one, then this is a nice recovery from yesterday. Yeah. Okay, anyway, we can quickly check if mm -hmm. they uh, already decided to make a draw or still are happy to play this draw and endgame. Alexander already won? Or yeah. Okay. So, okay, see the Alexandra Dinara game. Yeah, okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This is horrible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, basically, any move is winning since. So yes. <laughs> okay, this is not really interesting. So, they are still playing, <laughs> okay, let's have a look, <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, one could understand in a blitz game, but even there, I would Okay, but now I think they decided mm. to finally make a draw. Mm. Wow. <laughs> yeah, this was good defense by Alina, definitely. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, interesting game. Mm -hmm. So, what can be said? Yeah, it's only okay, these two games mm, left yeah. of the two mm -hmm. German players. Uh, yeah, probably but I think this will also be finished very soon. I think soon. H5 probably is the easiest solution because now somehow rooks will be changed. Mm. Yeah, I mean also King H7, everything is just completely mm. won, right? Yeah. Well, the idea being after King D7 just to play Rook, Rook G8 and then... Yeah, but the same idea is also after mm. King H7. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so... And the pawn ending, of course, is mm -hmm. dead lost. Yeah, she played King H7 and... Yeah, what to do? Mm. Poor Dinara. Yeah. This is definitely the moment to resign. Yeah, and mm -hmm. she resigned. Yeah, great game mm -hmm. from Alexandra again. Yeah, absolutely. She's leading mm -hmm. with three out of three. Very mm -hmm. strong player. Mm -hmm. And she was your favorite from the beginning. Yeah, she's <laughs> my favorite from the beginning. What do you think? Yeah, you absolutely. Think she will win? Did you put a bet on her? No, <laughs> but I should. You I should, think. yeah. I already had this feeling when I arrived here, but now after three out of three, but I think now the quotes are really bad for me. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> oh now no, the really too late. <laughs> really go down. Yeah, but anyway, <laughs> so I would bet on Alexandra for winning this tournament. She is in really good shape. 
Ah, so what am I doing? Um, <laughs> I don't know, maybe you're um, searching for slightly. some interesting <laughs> moment. Okay, so there's only one game left. Mm -hmm. And we have this interesting end game here. We are just not sure what the bishop on e1 is doing, but okay. I mean, it's still a winning position for Elizabeth, but it <gasps> will for sure take some time. So I hope you're not, not falling asleep, Stefan. <laughs> 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 Otherwise, I will <laughs> kick you. <laughs> well, I can sleep a bit, and you will continue. <laughs> and kick me afterwards. <laughs> so who is your favorite? If you're not 100% sure that Alexandra Kostenjuk will win this tournament, who else? Mm. Hard to say, I mean, because uh, the only players whom Elizabeth played bishop e6. Well, why not? There's still time to. Mm -hmm. um, I just think most the move. Uh, if, if you if I place king c2 to trap, trying in a way to trap the bishop, then bishop f5 is possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but still, you didn't answer my question. <laughs> So who mm -hmm. do you think will win? Um, oh, but now we've we've got a guest. <laughs> you so okay, you <laughs> still don't want <laughs> to answer. Okay, <laughs> so we make a short <laughs> break and then mm -hmm. we have a special <laughs> guest here. Welcome back. I have a special guest next to me, Alexandra Kostenjuk. Congratulations on your great game today and three out of three is really great start. How do you feel? Thank you. Well, tired <laughs> for the moment because it was a very um, difficult game. A lot mm -hmm. of uh, calculations and uh, it felt it felt that I had something like more direct, but in the time trouble I... Mm, didn't find anything, mm -hmm. like very beautiful. I calculated all those sacrifices on h7 and g7. Um, but yeah, the, end, the position was still better, so I'm not sure mm -hmm. what the computer will say. Because yeah, yeah in the <laughs> first game, for example, I thought that I played a good game, but then it turned out that I had a um, lost position at some point. Okay, mm -hmm. anyway, so it was yep. some kind of preparation, and yeah. I already played this line. Yeah, quite a fancy line. Apparently, even though the pawn on e4 is hanging, it's uh, very dangerous to take because yes. of rook e1, d4, mm -hmm. and yeah, compensation. Yeah. Here is the same mm -hmm. thing. Um, so, yeah, I've played this kind of setup with the rook on e1, but here I think I made an improvement a little, a little bit, but I forgot completely all my opening preparation. So okay, I so until when did you know your preparation? Well, until this moment, until this but moment. then, okay. well, of course, I knew some ideas. I've played this kind of structure, but from this moment on, I played, uh, well, basically <gasps> on my own, yes, queen c7, knight e5, bishop d7, bishop c6, like um, black's plan. And uh, here I was not sure about f4, right? The most direct move, yes. f4. Then probably queen b6. I was not sure what's her idea. Yeah, we also was. wanted to go for f4 later, yeah? So we mm -hmm. liked your ideas? 
but yeah, I decided to prepare a little mm -hmm. bit. Yes. Because again, mm, Black doesn't have a lot of useful moves, so she has to play Queen C7. She has to play Bishop D7. And here I spent a lot of time for my next three moves. But I think, well, at least it felt that I made the right choice. Uh, I captured on C6, because mm -hmm. if I would go Knight F3, one of the moves that I considered, of course, then Knight A5. Mm -hmm. And even though I always can play E5, right? Yes. She can capture here on B3. A takes B3, because if I take on F6, Knight C1. And then she captures... And without my light squared bishop, I don't know. Uh, of course, her knight needs to go mm, on a very passive square. But still, it's not so clear how to break through. And if I don't break through, then sh her bishop will go eventually to c6. She will play f6. And I don't know, she, she will have two, a pair of bishops. So that's why I decided to, to capture uh, with the knight. If she captures with a pawn, I play e5. At least mm -hmm. it was my idea. Here I played a4. I spent a lot of time yeah. mm, here because I was um, calculating all those ideas, all possible ideas, all possible moves here. Bishop c2 I wanted to play very much, but in that case b5 is possible. And that's why I played a4. That's why mm -hmm. I... Uh, mm, um, decided to improve my position a little bit because the bishop on c2 will be hanging. I cannot capture on b5. And in this kind of Hedgecock structure, right, you always need to calculate those b5 and d5. Those are main black ideas and white wants to um, not let black play those moves. Mm -hmm. And um, rook f3 I was also thinking, but for some reason I thought that I'm not quite ready yet. I don't remember because... Your idea was to attack the king? Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. to play mm, rook h3, bishop c2, e5, something like that. But I mean, the, look, um, the rook is very weirdly placed yeah. here. So I don't remember what I... Maybe b5 as well. We really liked your idea with e4 yeah, and later b5. with e4. It was fascinating and mm -hmm. very strong in our opinion. Yeah, so I played a4 for the mm -hmm. moment, right? Because I take this square under control and all those ideas are still in there. Bishop c2, rook f3, e5. She always need, ne needs to be very careful ne about all those kind of moves. So she played b6. Yeah, knight d7 is possible, but again, I don't know. Bishop c2. Um, still, I think, a little bit more pleasant to play for me. Mm -hmm. And in this line that I see here, I was thinking about rook a3. <laughs> Sometimes this rook can go. Oh, yeah, <laughs> nice. because th this rook lif lifts when the bishop goes away. Uh, so she played b6, bishop c2, queen b7. And here I thought that I'm ready to play before. Yeah, I mean we were thinking that queen b7 was not so correct. Because but it was so tempting, right, to, <laughs> yeah. to, to, to put the queen there and to put some more pressure mm -hmm. on e4. We thought maybe bishop b7. Yeah, and maybe. Attacking c4. But again, she uh, is not threatening anything. And after bishop mm -hmm. b7, I can consider rook f3 again. Yes. I'm not sure if it's the correct plan or not, but I had this in mind. Because if my rook goes to h3, then e5 will become a threat, right? So who knows? And d5 is not possible, I believe, because of e5 and then bishop h7, rook h3. Mm -hmm. So okay, she played queen b7, I decided to move on, and mm -hmm. d5, and that's the critical position I calculated a lot. Yeah, I see that yeah. it felt like it should be bad. But, you know, sometimes you just need to prove why. Yes. <laughs> and I, I calculated all those, I mean, exchanges. And, well, at, at the end, I just decided mm, to play the position with her bishop on e8. Mm -hmm. That actually happened in the game. I thought that the bishop is so poorly played that she doesn't have enough coordination. And I went for it. It's like a more positional approach. e5, of course, I calculated because bishop takes before it doesn't work because of e takes f6 mm -hmm. and bishop c3, queen d3. But the problem is knight d4 she goes with the knight on e4 and here this position i i mean didn't i think this is completely okay for black yeah that's what i thought yeah and uh b5 i played a takes b5 uh here i when i was playing b5 i was not sure whether what is like better 
to yeah. put to keep this pressure to keep this pawn on e5 to play bishop b2 here for example and to keep this pawn on e4 st still to have this e5 idea somewhere maybe but at the end since time was ticking and uh, it was not enough time <laughs> i decided <laughs> like to capture here to take here B yeah, and here again I spent a lot of time calculating everything, but then I just realized that if I put my bishop on the long diagonal, they're so strong, mm -hmm. and I suddenly I have all those ideas with knight d5, which I calculated like crazy here every single <laughs> move, but the time was not enough, because knight d5 was so tempting, because if she captures with the rook, she loses, I think, because of uh, bishop f6, and if she takes, I take... And then I play queen g4, queen f5 with a checkmate. Mm -hmm. uh, but the problem is that she needs to take. Uh, that's one piece. That's another piece. You know, this famous yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, sacrifice. That's piece number three. I was thinking about but it. But unfortunately, <laughs> I didn't see anything after f5 or f6. Mm. It's like, oh, he sees something. Okay, maybe f6 then. I was not sure. f6 probably because bishop, queen... Okay, he sees something I didn't. And you know, I just sacrificed three pieces. And um, I was running very long mm. time, and if like queen h7, bishop g7, okay, it, it, it sees something, but I didn't see anything. Queen g4, no, the queen is here, what else? Uh, probably but queen h7. Okay, no. queen h7. Queen h7, yeah. It looks like a good idea, but still yeah. it's... It's complicated. And it's you don't very know. complicated. Yeah, you don't, you don't know, know during the yeah. game, but then yeah. here, you know, you like. Um, but she can also take, and it's not so clear whether I have a mm -hmm. checkmate or not, right? Yeah, we checked this position actually with the double sacrifice, but uh, we couldn't see anything. Mm -hmm. Only like ancient says draw. But yeah. Yeah, because she always have this knight for anyway. So it was very tempting. Yes. I spent a lot of time, but then okay, I decided to play queen f3. And mm -hmm. Now I'm threatening to take on d5. Yeah. Because if she makes, I don't know, let's say rook d7, some kind of waiting move, then I have knight d5. Rook d5 is the same story. She takes on d1. I take, uh, I take queen d1, and the same checkmating idea. And when she captures with the knight, I just mm -hmm. pin her. Um, knight and win it back with a very pleasant position. But queen a8 somehow protected from this <laughs> idea. <laughs> yeah. Because if I capture now, knight takes d5, bishop e4, the pawn is hanging. And then, then another pawn is hanging. Mm -hmm. and uh, I mean, yes, I was evaluating this position. It's a very good one for me. But I couldn't see, you know, the the winning continuation. So I played queen g3 and I went to this position. But it felt as I'm giving away some kind of advantage. Although the computer s uh, says plus two, I see now. Okay, but somehow, I don't know, I didn't uh, like it. Because yeah. um, in, in time trouble, after knight d4, I was very scared that she would capture on d4. You know, in time trouble, you're always scared of some mm -hmm. strange lines. <laughs> um, and then she, go, um, then she would go bishop f7, and she would put this bishop on, on the long diagonal, and yes, I have my bishop as well. I, I was saying to myself, okay, come on, even bishop takes e4 should be okay, but how okay? I was not sure how to evaluate this position. Yeah, with opposite color bishops. Yeah, yeah not easy. Because if I take, take, uh, bishop b6, take, take, uh, bishop b3, probably rook a1. I don't know. I didn't. I mean, I was so scared of just. Um, I mean, giving all my advantage away. So she played bishop g6. That made me very happy. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I need to somehow to to do something about this knight on e4. Uh, we were wondering why you're not playing knight e6. Well, knight e6, you have to always calculate those uh, knight d2 and knight f2 yeah. and so yes, many we stuff. Yes, we were also thinking about it, but we thought that it's just working perfectly. Probably. I don't know. Uh, here I did not already have time to calculate mm, anything, yeah. so it was more intuitive to mm -hmm. cover it. But the problem is, for example, here, yeah. I liked my move queen d1 so it much. It was but really great. Yes, but I didn't see how I'm winning here, and I was like so... <laughs> I just felt that it should be winning, mm -hmm. uh, but I didn't see how. Okay. Uh, it was 
well, it's not really an, like entirely a bluff. We cannot call it a bluff. I just feel that it should be winning, but it you didn't see. You followed your intuition. Well, I mean, I thought that I can always play at least queen d7. And if she goes uh, bishop f7, I can capture on a 5. And if she plays uh, rook f7, I can at least play bishop mm -hmm. b3, you know? And I hope that it should be winning. But when you have less than five minutes, it's like oh, you cannot really um, calculate a little bit more, like to get deeper into all those variations. And I was scared. Yeah, uh, but we really loved your move. Me, me too. I like it. it. It just feels right. Yes. And I said, okay, maybe. <laughs> my, but uh, I think you <laughs> should have played uh, anyway. Uh, I, I like knight e7 as well because mm -hmm. king f7, bishop b3, and I think I should be checkmating her there. Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, I because there is a mate in a five. Okay, come on, come on. <laughs> be able to find me. Mate in five, we find it. Okay, check. No, it's not mate in five. Queen d seven probably, and with the idea of uh, bishop b three. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Okay, I saw queen d seven, so probably I would have. I would make a right choice, the right choice here, but. King h8 I was calculating because at first I thought that I'm winning here. <laughs> I was going to play queen f3. Then I realized that this queen is like, oh. yeah. <laughs> and if I play queen d3, then she plays queen d8 and she mm -hmm. covers the h file. So I was not sure what to do here. Again, it shows plus four. But anyway, winning, but how? Mm. In time trouble, sometimes it's very hard to find. Yeah, not easy to see. Maybe queen d7 again. Yeah, I also thought about queen yeah. d7 and then because knight g6, g6 yeah. is a threat, and then rook f7, I take, mm -hmm. I take the rook probably. I mean, it it feels winning, right? Yeah. Okay, and that's quite reasonable that she didn't uh, go for it. Plus seven, <laughs> and I ended up in um, end game in the end game in the rook end game. Yeah. <laughs> Plus seven. What is here? In game. Winning somehow, winning completely. Probably bishop e4 or f5, maybe like this. Maybe starting with bishop e4 and f5, keeping my bishop there. Yeah, F for some reason I was so scared to this knight f2 that no, it's not the right way. Okay, anyway, so it was somehow winning completely. Oops, and I played bishop d4 because I was uh, already playing on seconds and I was trying not to blunder anything in one move. Ah, uh, and okay, I'm winning. I knew that I'm winning. G4. Mm -hmm. Plus 10. How did I end up? Uh, probably what What should have I done here? I don't know. Okay, Qu rook of 6. Yeah, and here I liked rook d1 very much. Because it's so, there was some kind of a very funny line. If she plays uh, rook of 8 and I retreat my queen, and she plays bishop of seven. <laughs> I play knight e seven <laughs> in such a position. But then, I mean, on <laughs> seconds, I said, okay, it's like, it's so, this <laughs> mm, it's still not. Yeah. How am I winning? <coughs> How is it? I don't know. I liked your idea, just taking the queen and Wait, maybe going g5 in the here. Game. Yeah, probably g5 here. Yeah, g5 we were also thinking, yeah. And if rook f7... Some kind of beautiful line. No. Knight e7 also was quite tempting because king f7 I mm -hmm. take with a check and I promote my pawn. And if she plays king f8, maybe then g5. Rook f7. I mean, plus 9. Ah! You see, I should, should be solving more tactic. <laughs> tactics. <laughs> Rook d1 was also quite tempting. Ah, some completely winning position. Yeah, probably rook d1 is also very nice because where to go with her? I was scared of <laughs> e3. Mm -hmm. um, that's why I didn't play rook d1. Mm, it's not plus 9. Okay, guys, if you want to solve, mm, I mean, if you want to train your tactical <laughs> skill, maybe even a5 or something like this, can it be? a5? Okay, interesting, yeah, why not? Yeah, but then I don't see how I promote my pawn. 
Oh no. Plus four. Also not bad. Okay. I Oi! What am I doing? I am. I played rookie one. But I think it's it's the best decision if you don't have Plus much five. time. Yes, but just it's take so the winning end game. Yeah, but I mean, when you feel that it's mm. during the game, you feel that it's plus yeah. ten. Okay, but here it's plus six, right? Also not so not so bad. And then yes, and here I decided, okay, rook end games. Uh, mm. They are known for its drawing chances, but it just yeah, couldn't okay. be. Couldn't <laughs> be yes, and it's the rest uh, was quite yeah. easy. Was easy, but yeah. Still, I will be thinking about this plus nine. Yeah, yeah. very interesting. What we missed, I don't mm -hmm. know, but. I like the way that you just went into a completely winning endgame because yesterday we also had a game from Dinara and she had very great position and she could also go into an endgame and then just probably win this endgame because it was completely winning actually. But then she decided, no, there must be something and yeah, that's when she blundered the pawn and also lost the position later. So it is seven, king f8, and then g5, and then if rook of seven, can I capture here? No. Ah, okay. Anyway, I will be. <laughs> <laughs> there are many winning uh, continuations, right? But this yeah. plus nine will be kind of buzzing me. It feels that it's winning. Anyway, thank mm -hmm. you so much for this nice thoughts in your game. And yeah, it's, it's very beautiful how you played this. And I wish you all the best for the rest of the tournament. And yeah, thanks so much for You're everything welcome. and take a nice rest. Thank you. Welcome back after <laughs> this great interview with Alexandra. And there's only one game left. We will check it right now. Mm -hmm. It's a game of Shongi against Elizabeth. And we were finishing here before we went into the break.
Mm -hmm. So, what happened now? Quite a lot happened. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, let's look. Um, Bishop e4. Ah, now Elizabeth decided to take here on c3, which is quite a big decision. But of course, the fact is that these pawns are devaluated. I mean, white can never um, create a passer here. So basically, black has um, two pawns more. Or but the only drawback is that, in a way, black has, um, has to take care for this one. And the white hope only being that the black king cannot break through. I mean, if the black king succeeds to reach g4, then yeah, bishop c4, this is the first hint, because um, uh, white uh, cannot take, of course, because, um, because then exactly this plan, king f5, king d5, king g4, king g3, E5, King H4. Or is it? No, it's King G, King G4. Sorry. Um, yes, yeah, King G4. Instead of taking uh, exactly. King G4, waiting yes. one more time. Exactly, very good. King G4 is the precise move. Absolutely right, thank you. Because now if white can't counter attacks then, <coughs> <coughs> then this is winning for black. Okay, um, so of course this is the reason why white has to avoid the exchange. Yeah, it is a nice move, protecting here the only vulnerable spot. But still, now black has to make progress. And the engine says it's equal. Oh, that's bad and news. Also, I somehow believe mm -hmm. it's equal because I don't see how to win. Yeah, this. Well, this would be very sad, because then probably it was the wrong decision to take in e3. Uh, let's I also don't know exactly. Ah, now I see it. Ah, bishop e4 was a tricky move, because now on, on b6, then white can go knight d5 check and reach this scenario with bishops of different color. Although it might be that this is, um, it is, might this is winning win. for black. Uh, this would be uh, would have been a crucial question. Now probably push the pawn to b4. Because the structure is so dangerous for white. But the problem might be that it's very difficult to enter with the black king. I mean to make progress here with the two pawns, then you need to enter with the king. And then the moment when you enter with the king, then you might lose the pawns here. So it is um yeah. Also, the engine doesn't. Mm. Also, probably this bishop a1, this was not the... Um, but now it's quite amazing that the engine gives equal here. I still would think that black has very good winning chances, no? But how? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> This would be very sad news for Elizabeth if this game is not it's not possible to win it. Yeah, but it looks like mm -hmm. she also doesn't mm -hmm. know how to proceed. Hmm, yeah, this is very unlucky. Hmm. Because I'm sure the position was big advantage, so let's maybe go if this is really draw here. I've mm, I mean earlier. She should have played this land with e3, which yeah, we yeah. checking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think then it's yeah. This this easier. ending was not as as uh, clearly won as it looked. I mean, but uh, I also would have thought that it's winning for black, but must be said. But um, but I wonder is the difference if she plays the bishop to b2 here. Because now knight c3, and to play bishop to a3. To attack from c5. Is there a difference now after bishop e4? I mean, what black always can do and should maybe is just to play bishop, um, bishop c6 also. No, but here also b5 is possible, no? Mm -hmm. And here the engine. 
gives at least clear advantage for black. Mm. Yeah, bishop e6, this was the mistake. Mm. Because this allowed this trick with bishop e4. I mean, if white... Okay, but here's the problem is that this... Um, okay, let's say just play bishop c6. Because now it's obviously the idea to play d5, d4, maybe. Yes. What does the engine say? Well, it's an advantage for black, but it's not. It's not entirely clear. So, yeah, so maybe really, as, um, as um, Veronica says, maybe it was really the clean solution to keep the beautiful a pawn in this position. Um, Yes, yeah, yeah, three move them. Well, the engine says clear advantage, but it's also not um, not so clear. What does white do? Bishop takes g6. So bishop g6, maybe bishop c1 check. No. Bishop C1 check. Yeah, I think then the the A pawn is winning somehow. But if White cannot take on G6, then of course it's nice to play A3. Mm -hmm. What is White else doing if White cannot take in G6 then? Or maybe King D3. Also doesn't seem to work, but... Um, yeah, take ah, on C4 and take, take on D4 exactly and yes. mm -hmm. Oh, but King B3 maybe, right? Yeah, okay, but I think... Yeah, okay, this is also because now the structure here is... Also not entirely clear, I think. Yeah, I think this is the problem. King D3 is the only chance for white. And now we need a good move. B5, maybe. Ah, B5 would be possible. So it's Knight takes. Don't see. And that takes the bishop takes c4 check and a2. Mm -hmm. And then c takes b5, my idea was simply to play um, bishop takes d5. Because now I think the a pawn is extremely strong. And then Yeah, engine gives totally winning position. Mm -hmm. So maybe this was the solution. Mm. In just play a minute, yeah. To play um, a3 in this moment, and um, bishop takes g6 doesn't work at all, because um, bishop c1 check is killing, I think. <sighs> and the big problem for white is that the white king cannot go to d3, because then bishop b1 check <laughs> Very nice bishops. And if white plays the more resilient um, after a3, king d3, then I think that b5 is quite a nice idea. As we said, knight takes b5, fails to bishop c4 and a2, and I think this c takes b5, bishop d5. This also must be totally winning, and the engine shows plus four, so. Mm. Yeah, this might be the mm. solution. Yeah, most probably. But the idea with B5 is not so easy to see. No, yeah, of course, in temperature it's... While this ending, although black is a pawn up and has a beautiful bishop pair, it seems it's not so easy. But this is also unlucky, because normally, I think in nine from ten similar positions, it's totally winning. Mm -hmm. With bishop pair and pawn up and open position and... 
which also I think it, it, it is winning. It's, but it seems it's not easy. But it's some, some. Uh, but still, I just wonder whether there's a clear blunder. This is the reason why I'm going through slowly through the moves. Four. Yeah, four was an interesting idea that I underestimated. I thought that four is just positional, also a bad move, but it seems. Yeah, I think still bishop b2 is better here in this mm. moment. For sure. Yeah, bishop e6, this was the real bad move because I think it's still. If black, let's say, puts bishop to c6, it's still not entirely winning, but. Bishop e6, yeah, now bishop e4, now probably it's really. Now it's really difficult because of the b6, then why does this knight d5 check? And it might that this. Mm -hmm. But still, I'm not so sure whether it's really. Is it true? Because. King f5. I oh, would probably white just plays bishop f7 or something like this. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, here this this bad pawn structure here. Yes. Mm. Yeah, but this is really a pity for Elizabeth. Ah, what happened here? Is there still something going on? Yeah, now the white bishop is very nice. Always targeting this pawn, and the white king is very active. And mm. Hmm. yeah, bishop e4, only move. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now it would be uh, the, the plan to invade here, but here the bishop, mm. of course, is exactly yeah, well. Yeah, losing mm -hmm. one pawn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well. Hmm. Very unlucky. Hmm. That's the question whether white should take, because then black can advance the deep pawn, but probably, no, it doesn't help anything. Probably we can just take the pawn, I think. And then d4, we just. Um, so. Even Zug Zwang, black loses. <laughs> but at least black is not in danger to lose. <laughs> mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, but it must be admitted, very tough defense of Tan. Yeah. With white, I would have thought it's totally over. But she saw this this um, defensive setup with f4, and then later this move bishop e4. Yeah, we are seeing many nice defenses mm -hmm. in this tournament. Mm -hmm. So always keep on fighting. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Is yeah. there still something interesting happening here? Well, her only idea is key four, I would say. Mm -hmm. And then d4, king e3. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, maybe there's still some action here. Mm -hmm. Or is there a clean drawing solution? Hmm. Oh, yeah, playing f5. Right? King mm -hmm. e4, f5. Is mm -hmm. this. Yeah, yeah, this looks good. But if even G4 probably to change all the they there to change all the pawns somehow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, true. Also G4, yeah. Is there there after changing and then um, next move I play H5 and then mm. most probably it's yeah, true. Okay. But, but still it's a good try by Elizabeth. Of course. F5 also looks good.
just to take a look. Probably a five is the cle cleaner solution. Yeah, the engine likes it. In G4. Also likes <laughs> it. <laughs> <laughs> it's the question of why does do anything else? <laughs> well, maybe Bishop B3 is not so intelligent because then D4 and. Mm. Waiting might be a bit difficult. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, like, does have an idea to play d4 and king e3. And she played my move f5. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you. So you also would have drawn this ending without any problems. Yeah, this is a very clean drawing move. Yes. Does have to gf bishop h5, not an. Um, white has the h pawn in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry. That's a counterweight. Yeah, very good defense, it must be admitted. Yes. What will Elizabeth do now? And she takes with the cheap pawn. Brave. She is still trying to mm. win this end game. I think I would have just taken the draw. I mean, what else? No, d4 maybe. Yes, of course, d4. But probably white will simply retreat with the bishop to d1 maybe and. Mm hmm. Okay, let's see what she will play. Hmm. If only some seconds, I think I would have just played. King takes f5 and take the draw. But she played king e5. You're moving mm -hmm. with the bishop. Yeah, from bishop d1. Bishop d1 yes, yes, that's what I would. That's what I would play. Mm -hmm. D1, probably d4 must be the idea. But well, she can bring the pawn to d2, but then h5. Yeah. 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 And she played bishop d1. Yeah. Well. And But now she played something different. She played bishop e4 instead of d4. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because otherwise the pawn will be weak on d4 of the. But now also h5, I think. h5, h6, and even if I lose the pawn, put the king on d4. Yeah, of course it's completely mm. drawn, but I think black will now play f4 maybe and just make the draw. Mm -hmm. H5. Yes. So, what's Elizabeth idea, Elizabeth's idea now? King f6. Okay, but King d4 and. Yeah. And they already agreed to a draw. Okay. So maybe we just make a small recap of the about the games today. Yes. Okay. Do you want to start with this? Mm -hmm. So first the results. We have a draw between mm -hmm. Shongi and Elizabeth. Then Yeah, maybe just to talk just shortly about the games. And okay. Yes. Yeah, this was the game we just saw. It was a pity because Elizabeth played a very strong game. And played an interesting opening sac upon sacrifice and played very well afterwards. And only um, one moment, probably wrong decision um, in the technique, giving her a pawn, cost her the full point. This was a pity, but, but on the other hand, it was a very strong defense of Shang-Chi Tan. Uh, a very good game of Alexandra Kostenyuk, 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, where she won right. against mm -hmm. Dinara, we mm -hmm. just analyzed. Mm -hmm. We had her right here in the studio, so mm -hmm. I think we talked about everything important <laughs> in this game. <laughs> Very interesting. And yeah, and Harika um, um, put up some pressure against Alina. It looked very good for Harika after the opening, but Alina found a nice defense to um, sacrifice a pawn and activate her game, activate the bishops and uh, keep the draw. And then the game of um, Jan Zaya against Jinar. Um, ah, yeah, uh, this was the Sveshnikov game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this was, in my opinion, this was a very strong game by um, Gina, um, who played very well the uh, classical Sveshnikov variation with black and showed the dynamic potential of the, the position and um, I think won very convincingly with black pieces. Yeah, I like the idea mm -hmm. with b4 and b3. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very strong. And yeah, Maria chose a very solid opening with white against um, Hampi Conero, but the thing never could put up some serious pressure and um, black defended well. And so this was quite a correct game, I think. And Anna against um, Anna against Nana, which opening was this? I think it was also Sicilian. Ah yeah, it this was, was this Marozzi. Later ah on. yeah, this was this sharp Marozzi. Um, one moment, just take a look. <coughs> Someone didn't take a look for quite a time. Which game was this? Ah, yeah. Ah, okay. Uh, this, uh, this was the reason why I did not remember it. Because here the draw was for us a bit miraculous. Because we thought in the final position that Anna is a little better. And it's a very sharp position. Um, but obviously she offered a draw in this moment. when um, after, after the last move, rook takes b7. And... Black agreed, and this is understandable because I think if somebody is better, if somebody is better, then it's probably white. Mm. So this was not absolutely clear to us why um, a yeah. draw was offered by white. We were very expecting a fight, mm -hmm. but uh, somehow it ended in a draw. Okay, so two victories today, and the rest was drawn. Mm -hmm. So what to expect tomorrow? Tomorrow is the fourth round, and we will have many interesting games again, of course. We have Dinara with White against Nana. We have Humpy with White against Anna. We have Gina with White against Maria. Alina with White against Sansaya. Elisabeth with White against Harika. And Alexandra with White against Shongi. Mm -hmm. So, we are looking forward for tomorrow's <laughs> games. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the games, at least we did. Mm -hmm. It was exciting again. <laughs> yeah, and we hope to see you tomorrow again. Uh, or to be precise, the other way around. You will see us tomorrow, <laughs> if you like. <laughs> and we wish you a nice evening, or depending on which time zone you are, maybe also a nice morning <laughs> and a good day. See you tomorrow. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>